Welcome to another spirit filled message on Christocentric message. If you're new to this channel, I would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well. I would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth, it's going to bless you. Your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then God is going to visit your home. Thank you for watching. Stay blessed. Speak to me, my heart is ready to receive. Lift your voice and pray. Speak to me tonight. You are making men make me too. You are empowering men, empower me also. You are showing men your favor and lifting men mysteriously. Lord, let me be part of that program. You are recruiting a mighty army that will shake the nations of the earth. Would you grant by your spirit that I be a major part of this move of the spirit. You are pruning men. Let my tears not stop you. You are revealing yourself to men. Show me your glory in a new dimension. You are turning lives around. This is the place of encounter. and declare 
that you are anointing your spirit, the ministry of angels, find expression unrestrained. We thank you. We bless you. Give us encounters. We have not come to waste our time. We have not come to fulfill a ritual. We have not come to listen to a man. We have come like Jacob to the place where we will see your face. And Jacob said, I will not let you go until you bless me. And he said, what is your name? And he says, Jacob. He said, thou shalt no longer be called Jacob, but Israel. For as a prince, you have power with God and prevail. The Bible says he touched his thigh. And the sun arose and he called the name of the place Peniel. And he says, I have seen God face to face and my life is spared. Give us revelations, O oh God. Let the spirit of revelation through the world, through visions, through encounters, that while you are speaking, O oh God, let your word become images. Let your word become pictures. And let it glue upon our spirits until we become what you are revealing. travail and God is birthing a lot of things we must be very sensitive don't be careless with your discernment when you come to the house of God like this let your spirit be open the devil will try to distract you with your challenges whatever just throw them away and let your heart be fixed on him in the name of Jesus Christ thank you I just want to say a few things before before we get to the word tonight um, I thought of recent at the faithfulness of God over my life and over this ministry and um, I've had to fight tears because of the overwhelming blessings of God I receive text messages every day. Our lines are jammed every day. People calling from around the world, expressing their gratitude for what the word of God in and through this ministry is doing in their lives. The miracles, the signs, the wonders. Um, you have to be evil to pretend like the things that are said don't matter the, the the level I mean quite frankly let me tell you sincerely we don't get to hear up to one tenth of the transforming stories that happen in the lives of people what what we receive here on Friday is, is just a token because we're constrained by time and then because not everybody who would want to share is available here and um, I really really am touched and then to know how 
how easy God has made this thing particularly for me I am deeply indebted to him you see let me tell you this when when you honestly sit down and talk with a man of God who fears and loves God he may end up crying because of the pain is a difficult thing to head a ministry to run a ministry to mentor and to teach people there's no guarantee anywhere that they will be changed there is no guarantee that they will even listen to you and so when people give you their attention and commit their lives it's much more than they are liking you there is a grace there is an anointing are we together i am i am very very touched the workers in this ministry who have made my job easy you don't see me running around here to verify what are they doing and I acknowledge I talk with pastors I have colleagues in ministry I have senior colleagues fathers mentors and I know how difficult they will tell you it's easy to preach but the system to make your message heard and understood is very difficult are we together now and I don't want to take lightly and take for granted um, what the Lord is doing in this ministry and through my life and um, I honestly want to appreciate everyone I more so want to acknowledge and appreciate everyone listen carefully and I'm saying this sincerely everyone who is genuinely part of this vision you know I hope you know that no one is obligated to believe in you are you aware of that that there is no yoke on anybody to believe whatever you said God told you it's a difficult thing to be trusted to be believed in enough for people to commit their loyalty and their lives if God is not ashamed to declare his vulnerability to men then no man of God should every time I come down from the car and I see people here despite the weather despite you see some sitting in the grass hanging around there are people inconveniencing themselves right now from around the world listening do they have to do this am i the only man of god and and uh, you know the most touching part of it is when people go out of their way to travel from other cities some of you are seated here now all through the week people have come from within the country from outside the country inconvenience themselves you don't want to know the sacrifice that people make week in week out some of them are men of God too they have their own ego they have their own pedigree and they drop that thing aside to come and sit down to listen to be blessed to be mentored please if God ever gives you influence value it is God helping somebody tonight if God ever makes men to say I will follow you as you follow Christ value it these are the things that when I see sometimes I'm so moved I'm so touched sometimes you see me just sit there and um, I just say Lord thank you you don't have to do this many men of God do not have the privilege of being loved across all regions usually there is one region that loves you and then another region that persecutes you harshly with a level of hatred that can almost neutralize the love that you have but God has made this different in my life and this ministry there is no region I have gone to that I'm not genuinely loved it's not normal I go to the east and I'm greatly loved I go to the west the south here the middle belt in fact the bible you know the bible says a prophet has is not without honor except in his hometown but the case is very different here i am deeply loved even within this place and i truly 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 value it hallelujah there are very few men of god and i tell you this very few men of god who operate in the level and the dimension of the gift of the spirit and a ministry like this who are not openly persecuted you don't walk in there is a level of the spirit that if you walk above just get set to be in in everybody's negative book 
you see that but of course not everybody will love you and believe in you but let's be honest let's be honest even those who probably if at all talk against me they don't really hate me some are just ignorant or maybe intimidated or maybe frustrated there are few people who are honestly truly speaking you say i mean i hate this person and i i want us to 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 understand this i want you to know that i value and appreciate everyone i really do you know men of god we are proud people and most times we act as if with or without the members um, we are all right it's not true it's not true it's just a psychological way of trying to let the members not take advantage of us but i cannot come here and speak to cheers no matter how anointed i am you are the seal of my apostleship it's 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 it's, it's really thank you thank you very much you truly are it's amazing only God knows but how many battles I would have fought that some of you fought it and won and kept quiet. Are we together? I saw that grace in Billy Graham. The grace that makes a man accepted in every region. The only man of God that preached in North Korea. I saw that same grace in Reinhard Bonke. It was one of the things that took me to Joss to passionately. I, I don't want to carry the truth and have to be explaining to everybody. Do you know how painful it is to be misunderstood? There is a grace. There are spirits that are responsible for misunderstanding a man and an anointing. Did you know something as little as this? Just this. Someone alone can say this is occultic power. This is demonic this. It, there is a spirit that blinds the eyes of people so that no your good is evil spoken of are we together you can sow a seed to someone they'll say you are trying to bribe the family are, are you not seeing am i the only ones there are people that have the, they are sincere but never believed they bless you they are persecuted for blessing you they heal the sick and pay the price they open a branch and pay the price it takes grace to be loved not good intention my parents were right when they named me the way to love they saw very far so when people love you i have been moved the last few weeks look at the concert we held a jimmy in that rain and i saw many of you jumping up and down and rejoicing no it's a grace it's a grace the race is not to the swift. There are very anointed men of God that someone would prefer to listen to the tape than to come and sit down physically. So why do I have to travel that far and leave all the men of God in my city to come and sit down? You know, someone was talking to me and said, Apostle, I think you spend too much time seeing people after service. You go home past 12. It's not fair. And I said, oh dear. I know how constraining it is for me. Sometimes I'm coming from another meeting. But this is the least I can do to these dear people. Some of them come from as early as 12. And they sit, they pray for me. They sow into my life. How busy can I get? What else will I be doing? It's true. I will cancel any meeting a thousand times to make sure you are trained, you are built, you are mentored. I rather fail, sincerely speaking. God, you are spiritual people. I'm not a politician. I rather fail so that you will succeed. Because if you succeed by me failing, then I succeeded. It's true. There is nobody, let me tell you, that I don't believe in. Pray in one minute and say, Lord, help my heart to receive. Help my heart to be open. You are being trained and mentored to become something. You may not look like it now, but brothers and sisters, you just follow with humility. 
it may take time you may compare your life with others and it may look as if you are slow you just follow and let time tell where God is taking you to please pray Lord the grace to listen yes I know I'm a man of God I know I have revelation I know I have anointing but Lord the grace to listen the grace to see beyond a man Lord, I receive grace to be committed. I reject every suggestion by Satan to alienate me from what you are doing in this season. Lord, I know that you are calling me to an extraordinary ministry. There is a reason why you have planted me here. There is a reason why you are equipping me. I may not have all the money that I need now. Others may seem to have gone ahead of me, but like Jesus walking on water, I know you are taking this on. He lead me and guide me to the city of love he lead me and guides me to my place of destiny he leads me and guides me to the city of love he leads me and guides me to my place of destiny me out of my season in the name of rushing to look for results you're a man of God here pray that prayer twice Lord may I may I resist the pressure of premature manifestation may I resist the pressure of pride and arrogance your life may look slower than the normal pace but when God is done with you you will find out that what you would have been doing has already been done in your obedience. Lift your voice and pray. It's a costly thing to go ahead of God. It's a costly thing to preach ahead of God. It's a costly thing to move ahead of God. The Bible says with God, not before God with God when you walk with him there's an old hymn that says when we walk with the Lord in the light of his word not when we go ahead of him men will force you to move ahead of seasons in your life they will make you do things God is not saying they will pressure you to open doors God is not opening and destroy you and laugh at you when you fall but happy is the man that can sustain the stamina to walk at God's pace. Please pray, Lord, the grace. Hallelujah. I remember years ago, a particular friend, a pastor friend then, he met me then, Koinonia had not started. We just used to hold the weekly programs then on campus. And he met me one day and said, man of God, you need to go for TV ministry. The level of your anointing 
even some bishops don't have. That's supposed to be a good advice. The same advice of Peter. Jesus, don't die. You are too innocent to go to the cross. And that advice looked like a nice advice. And they just felt you are on that. Please, write books. Do this. Do that. And every time I went to the Lord, the Lord made me know that, Son, it is within my power to make you anything. So if I don't, it's because there is a time appointed. People told me, why don't start a church? Do something. Do this. Do that. Start TV ministry. Buy a car. Buy this. Buy that. You see, let me tell you, the steps of a spiritual man is very strange. A spiritual man is not a natural man. Don't sit down. You, how you know you are spiritual is the pathway of your life is meticulously guarded by the will of God. Others can go the way they want, but God says, "Remember, anytime I look at you, there is a nation in you. So they can. You, it is your obedience that will correct their mistakes. They can go, but you can't just go like them." There are some of you, you started your spiritual work with the same level with many others that have churches and branches today. And sometimes they may look at you and say, man of God, you are the one who mentored us. And God says, sit down. I know what I'm doing with you. Because when I'm done with you, there are certain kinds of graces and mantles that must come. And God says, sit down. Are we together? Please, I want you to listen. Men will mock you. They will misunderstand you. There is nothing unusual. We just are not students of history. That's why this thing surprises us. Go and read the Bible. Any great vision is fought by hell. You see why your life is fought by hell? The devil will fight you tooth and nail because he would rather you die. In your death is the death of a generation. So he will rather you die. Instead of killing the generation one by one, he says, kill Moses. Instead of killing the entire earth, human race, kill Jesus. Let me tell you this. This is a sensitive season in the spirit. Satan is not looking for everybody. There are people he will pass looking for others. Your, your, your destiny if the devil ever stops to consider you there's something he's seeing it's not just i will live long i will live old no there are people here listen to me satan stopped attacking your family and turned to you because he found out out of everything he searched he found out if i can destroy her prayer life if i can destroy the anointing that i'm seeing this man of God is surely a prophet of God. He does not even know it. But if I can kill that grace, then there is no need fighting 120 people. There is no need of fighting a Decapolis if it can make one man mad. And so because of that, listen, the devil will fight you. You may want to get up and come for koinonia and the devil relax. Now can't you get the tape afterwards? It's an attack. It's an attack. People will mock you sometimes and say you have been going to church. What is it to show for your life? No job, no house. Everybody is moving forward and they are leaving you. And you feel stupid for staying with God. This my God? Ah. He is my God and his name is Yahweh. Your name is Yahweh.
you what will bring both the rich and the poor to you God is giving you something that you will never be ashamed of it's not something you will use for 10 years and need another thing no there are see listen you can get a degree you can get a master's you can get a phd and life will evolve such that what you studied may no longer be useful it is possible you can start a business and your product life evolves such that your product is no longer needed like a typewriter are we together every other thing in life needs constant evolution but when you know him when you find him when he anoints you my brother you stay through any time there is no mortal man who can edge you out of the systems of god they can believe you are gone god will show them you are still there listen years ago when god was trading me i remember one of the things that god told me he said son take your eyes away from the vanities of men the flamboyancy of ministry you just stay with me let me teach you there are many things i would later learn in my life i didn't know that was what the holy spirit was teaching me the holy spirit is a priceless asset don't mind the ignorant people that make it look like it doesn't pay to follow him you will look stupid while you follow him but when he's done with you he will bring beauty and glory they will look at you and your life will be Beulah and Hephzibah. You can do ministry the way you want to do. You can believe you have all the revelation you need and all the anointing. You just start going. On the way, you will see what dimensions of the kingdom you have ignored. And the price you will have to pay. And the price you will make others pay. For not paying attention. It's not enough to be called. It's not enough to feel trained. It's not enough to feel ready. You must be approved of God. Our level of carnality in this generation is becoming very serious. We ignore the voice of God. We just want to do things and get up and do it. No respect for the timing of God. No respect for spiritual things. Listen. Listen. We live by common sense. We run by principles. But we fly by instructions. Are, are you getting what I'm saying? When you want to walk in life one step, you can use brain work. Brain work is how many people want to achieve their destiny. The time in your life is too short to use brain work to be great. Then you use principles to run. But if it is flight, you will have to work on instructions. Those who teach pilots are not called teachers. They are not called lecturers. They are not called advisors. They are called instructors. Please sit down. Let's go to the word. I just, I just thought to, to just allow the Holy Spirit to talk to us. You know, when, when people see the anointing of the Spirit upon my life, many people believe it's just luck. I was just fortunate to be anointed. Or, I was just called and ordained to be anointed. Or, I was just fortunate to meet anointed people. And God anointed me. You really believe that? There are people who know nothing about the anointing. But then they will tell you, don't mind all these people. And yet you don't, we see, wisdom is justified by her children. Brothers and sisters, it is God that is the confirmer of everything. If God is not confirming something in your life, then listen to the person he's confirming something in his life. Are we together? One of the most dangerous things that can happen to a man is pride. You, you keep hearing me say this thing all the time. Pride is not just wrong. It truly is evil. You will watch yourself entering a pit and going down per second per second. 
yet pride will make you believe you are in control you are in charge i am very open to want to know the areas in my life where i am ignorant because if i don't pay attention to them that would be the advantage of satan in my life so i like to know what don't i know thank god for the one i know but what don't i know i'm i'm like a spiritual archaeologist i don't want god to be this way and i'm there jumping what else am i doing because i've learned through experience that the secret to a man's relevance not his making heaven his relevance is to be where god is you can make heaven whether you are where god is or not i just want to be where you are you know that song dwelling I don't want to worship from afar Drawing me to where you are Very powerful song I want to be where you are Dwelling in your presence Feasting at your table Surrounded by your glory that you want to announce yourself but just be patient others may announce themselves and say look I am sent of God my father is a priest we are the sons of Skiva and the demons say no we don't know you but God can look at you and say I'm announcing this my daughter I'm announcing this my son it may cost you some momentary inconvenience don't mind it which woman loses her baby just because of birth pains in spite of the fact that the baby she's carrying a child and is inconveniencing she may be tired and almost want to give up but she knows that very soon and when that woman's delivery time is come she may go through all kinds of constraints but when that child comes people who were not supposed to come and visit will find their way and they will not just come alone they will come with gifts don't invite people into your life when the child is not born nobody comes to greet you when you are pregnant if you can stay through when the child comes then you deserve every gift the wise men were around but they never came to mary it was after jesus was born the magi they came the bible says they brought they came and bowed down before a baby not before mary or joseph they bowed down before a baby and brought gifts of of gold of frankincense and man when you stay with god and birth what he's putting and you see god doesn't do nine months pregnancy the pregnancy depends on many things you can carry a child for five years the first child can be delivered in four months and then the second child in seven years this is god for you are we together the first child can just be something that is very simple in the spirit but the second child can be the core of your anointing you will stay there someone can have seven births of spiritual reality and you stay with one forever as if it's cause but when that child comes you will find out that all those seven will need that one child to be able to live that's why you had to stay that long when they looked at the womb of her with child, they said there are two nations, not two babies, two nations. Hallelujah. So pay attention. You are not just here to receive tea and bread. You don't need to put yourself under this kind of constraint if all you need in life is tea and bread. What God is giving you in this place is more than tea and bread. It's more than just a successful life. As important as it is, it's more than just prosperity in as much as we know prosperity it's more than just influence god is giving you something that cannot be bought in any market on earth 
he's putting something in your life that makes it impossible for some of you what you are receiving is the remedy for these complexes and all this inferiority that our families have put in us for when you have something that only God can provide then men must look for you that's what he's giving you are planning to save to buy a house he's giving you what will make house owners come to you and say can I have the privilege of having you in my estate God is showing you a more excellent approach to life it looks strange because it's not a mainstream approach to life but you walk with God and see a time will come you will turn back and not have needs again and you say Lord what did he do I say it's a more excellent way you follow the way men men follow to be established to live their lives you are going to leave God somewhere in your equation especially in our generation you must leave God somewhere but when he guides you, when he leads you. Ah. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Pray in the spirit for one minute. And say, Lord, open my eyes through your word tonight. Blessed be the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Tonight I'm preaching a message I titled Spiritual Stability. Please listen to this message. It's a powerful message and it will bless you. Spiritual stability. Three scriptures. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 58 spiritual stability i didn't have any divine revelation for this message but the message has come as a response to a need that i've seen in the body of christ that we need to explore the keys that are responsible for being grounded and being established in spiritual things are we together the teaching is an attempt to address the vacillations that we continually experience in our work with God based on a number of factors that we are going to be discussing that a believer can not only grow but can become stable are we together yes so it's, it's, it's an attempt to explore the keys to a grounded and productive Christian life. It matters to you and matters to God that your Christian life be grounded and productive. The Bible declares once and again that herein is our Father glorified. It says when we bear much fruit, it says that we produce fruit and that our fruits abide. Are we together? Three scriptures very quickly. Follow me tonight. I hope we are able to finish it tonight. Therefore, my beloved brethren, be ye steadfast, unmovable. Then it says, always abounding in the work of the Lord. For as much as ye know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Paul is speaking here to the church in Corinth. And he's telling believers that they be steadfast. And then unmovable, unshakable, unbendable. So it is possible that a man can be stable in his Christian experience. Ephesians chapter 4, please, and verse 14. The Bible, speaking about the fivefold ministry, it says that we henceforth, the matured ones, the ones who have been built now, by the gifts that, the, that, that, that God has supplied the body. That we henceforth be no more what? Please talk to me. Children. Tossed to and fro. And carried about with every wind of doctrine. By the slight of men. And cunning craftiness. Whereby they lie in wait to deceive. So there is a level of spiritual stability that a believer can get. He can attain onto a realm 
at a level in his work with God where you are unbendable, where you, you are so fortified that deception becomes an impossible experience for you. It is possible. One more scripture and then we'll begin to teach. Colossians chapter 2, please. We'll read from verse 6 to 8. Colossians chapter 2. It says, As ye therefore received Christ Jesus the Lord, so walk ye in him. We're reading to verse 8, 7. It says, Rooted, read with me, rooted and built up in him. Stop there. Notice, it didn't just say built up, rooted and then built up in him and established in the faith as ye have been taught abounding therein with thanksgiving verse 8 beware so you are not just being aware just by an information something you are doing in verse 7 is what will sustain this lest any man spoil you these are the various ways that men can be made to vacillate spiritually ready through number one is what please talk to me philosophy and then vain deceit and then the traditions of men and then the redoments another word there is the patterns the modus operandi the system of operation of this world and not after christ it is possible that a man can live his life manifesting the knowledge that just comes through philosophy and then vain deceit and then the tradition of men and then the redoments of this world you can believe this today and then tradition tells you no things are done this way and then you readjust your life to suit tradition are we together and while you are trying to gain stability through tradition all of a sudden the redoments of this world these are the things that destroy us they say this is how they do it in life you don't even know who puts that rule no this is how they do it this is how they do this this is how parenting happens this is how marriage happens this is how prosperity happens this is how ministry is done the bible says beware prophesy to yourself say beware he said less any man so who are the men who are the people the vessels that the devil uses they are not just angels they are men let any man spoil you the word spoil you there doesn't mean corrupt the word spoil you means to plunder to steal from you like an asset something of treasure has been given to you and then a man comes to spoil you like you come and rob a man and carry everything that is treasurable he said beware that means you are possessing something that has potential something of worth but beware lest men come sometimes innocently but they are in the similitude of robbers. They can spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit and the tradition of men and the redoments. This is the one that even disturbs me the most. The redoments of this world. This is how it is done. It's amazing how many people's destinies have been wrong perpetually. They, one of the ways that people have become failures in life is by aligning to a tradition and a pattern that has been obeyed for a long time but is wrong just because someone did something and kept doing it kept doing it for decades they can tell you this is it in this family nobody really you all this your jesus thing we love jesus and you the person who is talking is not very serious with god and he's marketing his template of spirituality to you and every time you show any unusual passion they say see we did this thing and left it the regiments of this world and people even turn scriptures in the bible and say see the bible even said don't be over uh, what, what, over righteous over spiritual and the person who is sharing that thing doesn't love the word of god he just found a scripture that will give him a basis for laxity and unseriousness a man can be stable spiritually as a man of God it's important to realize that you are mentoring and building people based on a truth you are convicted about let me tell you this not everybody can receive the correction that you propose 
after receiving your error not everybody will be alive and within your reach are we together if i teach you come if i teach you something erroneous now and 10 years down the line this brother goes abroad and he's in the u.s he has institutionalized that error and is paying the price life is whipping him for it and i later go and find the truth and i say people sorry what i said 10 years ago is a mistake this guy may never live to hear it he will still be carrying the mindset of me of 10 years ago and even when god is telling him adjust he said no way apostle said this that's why it is important that men of god we become the first guinea pigs to our revelations before propose it's not just anything you hear on tape and anything you feel is nice or anything by a man of god you love and respect you just ship and just spill everything to your people when people are loyal to you that means they have come to a point where either through a track record or a divine revelation they have come to accept your word as the word of god over their lives so they have opened up their spirits that any communication that comes from this man of god should be received subconsciously they have come to a point where they they have they have found comfort in following you as you follow after christ and you have a responsibility to probe and vet every revelation that is communicated to make sure it is worthy of giving to a generation not just members beware thank you lest any man spoil you are we together through philosophy vain deceit traditions of men and the rudiments of this world and not after christ it's amazing how you see people believe this today and they don't believe this tomorrow today i believe deliverance tomorrow i don't believe deliverance today i believe prosperity then i read one book by somebody i respect and all of a sudden i hate money next tomorrow i believe the gifts of the spirit the day after i believe common sense next tomorrow i believe divine direction the next ah, ah. no those those vacillations are very very dangerous you must be established to know that you can look at your children and say children before you were born this was what i stood for and even now as i am old i'm standing for this i called god a faithful god when i was 18 i am 85 he's still a faithful god i have not created another wrong name based on an experience that's the goal of this teaching and i'm going to share with you three keys that the lord or four that god has put in my heart keys that will create stability in your christian life because you see the internet social media um christian channels and all kinds of spiritual platforms right now on one hand they have benefited the body of christ but on another hand they have created gross confusion there are many people you have heard people you love and respect say things that have almost rattled the foundation of your convictions it's easy to resent somebody you don't believe but what happens when you hear someone who you love so much is saying and doing and standing for things that now makes you confused and so i must share with you otherwise we are going to be in serious trouble especially as a man of god here there is no guarantee that the person you look up to will continue to stand straight so in as much as you look up to people it's important to create a system are we together otherwise we're going to be in trouble you follow men as they follow christ not just as they go before you you follow men as they follow christ meaning that the day you don't see christ before them you are permitted to live it this is this is this in itself this thing i just said in itself can bring me a lot of trouble because sometimes we men of god teach people that trying to probe whether you are still following christ as they follow you can draw a cost to their life and even when people have long left the things of god they still demand loyalty from people no you follow a man of god as he follows christ if you're with me say amen. amen the first key that you need to have stability in your christian experience and please i don't want you to forget this the first key is an experiential revelation of god write it down 
an experiential revelation of God. I can spend the whole night talking here. If, if, if we're unable to, to exhaust this within the time we have, then we can just have part two of it. An experiential revelation of God. Look up, please. There is the experience of the kingdom. John chapter 3, when you read um, from, verse, from verse 1 down to 3, let's, let's go to verse 3. But Nicodemus comes to Jesus by night and says to him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a man sent from God, he says. He says, for no man can do these things except God be with him. And then verse 3, John, ah, okay, keep verse 3. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom. Take note of the word see. Verse 4. Nicodemus now says, Can a man be born when he's old? You know, can he enter into his mother's womb the second time? And then verse 5. Jesus clarifies and says, Verily, verily, I say unto you, Except a man be born of water and of the spirit. Then he changes his terminology. He cannot enter the kingdom of God he's talking about two related but different experiences there to see the kingdom and to enter the kingdom there is an experience of God listen very carefully there is an experience there is the knowledge of God a theoretical knowledge which is not wrong in itself are we together but there is the experience the experience of God the Bible says, oh, taste and see. Not just hear and believe. There is a place you hear, but there is a place you can taste. You can see. Your sensory perceptions can participate in your knowing God. Brothers and sisters, the times that we are living in will require you knowing a God that you have an experience over. It's good to know Joshua Selman's God is good to know this and that man of God's God but you must come to a point where you glean from their own experience and then create a road map through it until he becomes your God are we together the experiential revelation of God the Bible says and the people that do know their God not the people that do hear that there is a God the heathens heard already about the God of the Hebrews but they did not know him. Let, let me tell you this. Your life will be at the mercy of your experiential revelation of who God is to you. And there are three ways that God is revealed experientially. In fact, I think there's a message that I preached some years, knowing God experientially. You can get that message. It will bless you in no small way. But three major ways. Ready? Number one. The first way to have an experiential revelation of God is through his word, the written word. 1 Samuel 3.21 1 Samuel 3.21 God can give men encounters through his word. I told you that the word of God, the logos, are we together? Just keep the scripture there. But make reference quickly on your notes to John 1 verse 1. The Bible says, in the beginning was the word. The Greek word there is logos. The logos of God, the thoughts of God. A compendium of his character, his methodology. Encapsulated in a material. So that as you study that material, you not only cram scripture, but it expands your spiritual horizon to understand how God behaves. The logos. A man can experience God through his word. The Bible says, And the Lord appeared again in Shiloh. For the Lord revealed himself to Samuel in Shiloh. How? By the word of the Lord. So God can use his word to reveal himself. You can know his character based on his word. I know Sam. Come Sam. I know Sam, I've worked with Sam for many years. He's an amazing gentleman and I love him very much. Because I have interacted with him very much. Are we together? There is something that someone can come and meet me now and say, Apostle, Sam said I should tell you A, B, C. I will make reference to the track record of my working with him. Are we together? And know whether Sam can say this or not. 
I would rather be wrong and say sorry to that person. But as far as that information is concerned, I can throw it away. Are you getting what I'm saying? So the word of God is a revelation. Um, one of our dear media ladies, I, I, I was during my birthday. She has a blog page and a wonderful blog page, by the way. You can you honestly would want to just go to her blog page very rich wonderful materials and that lady i can't even remember the name of the blog page it was it was shown me and i went through it and she wrote certain quotes or certain things that that i say that has inspired i didn't even know that i've stressed those points that much to become a quote are we together now if one young man gets up and say i know apostle Apostle is my spiritual father, Apostle is my this, my apostle is my mother, is my uncle, is my sister, and says all those kinds of things. And they say two quotes from him, and he just says one kind of thing. He said, No, it's my Muro that said this one now. It's not. <laughs> Are you seeing that now? Automatically, you know that this guy is a liar. If someone says, I attend Koinonia every time, there are a few tests very few litmus tests i mean you don't need to you can't fake it just there are very few things anybody at all even if you are not a faithful member there are just certain things you can know that no it's a lie someone attends koinonia hear someone shout and say what's happening say ah i thought you said you attend this you are not something is betraying you somewhere so the logos of god thank you sam the word of god was not just given for us to cry is a compendium of his way of behavior through different dispensations so that as we study we have the mind of Christ are we together we have an understanding of the way he behaves so the Lord appeared to Samuel in Shiloh by the word number two the way remember we're still on point one now I hope I hope I'm not confusing you you can call it point a through his word B, the second way experiential revelation of God is given to the saints. Now pay attention. Is through the family of believers. Your interaction with the family of believers. What the Bible calls the household of faith. Many people do not know that your interaction with a kingdom community of believers can help you experience God. Hmm. The family of true believers, the household of faith, is one of the platforms that God designed for men to encounter Him experientially. A number of scriptures, Acts chapter 2, please. We'll read 42 to 47. Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter 2. 42 to 47. And they continued steadfastly. Listen carefully. Who are the they? The community of believers. Is that true? The Bible says steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine. And what? Talk to me. And fellowship. And in breaking of bread and in prayers. We are reading to 47, 43. And fear came upon every soul. And many wonders and signs were done by the apostles. 44. And all that believed were what? All that believed were not apart. There was a community system. So this issue of kingdom community, I have, I have proposed again and again that the keys to maintaining kingdom values, one of the keys is to create a community of believers. No believer can truly become matured in the spirit in isolation. You must be grafted to a family of faith that is territorial. Are we together? And all that believed were together and had all things in common. 45. They sold their possession and their goods and parted them all uh, to all men, uh, you know, as everyone had a need. 46. And they, listen, continuing daily with one accord in the temple and breaking of bread from what? House to house did eat their meat with gladness and singleness of heart what was the result 47 praising god the bible says and having favor with all the people and the lord added to the church daily as should be saved that means god was supporting that community life 
saying you are getting it right everywhere there is a community of believers that is a platform that was created by god to see that believers rise continue to grow the benefit they get is god's support by adding daily not weekly not monthly not per fellowship daily they were praising God, having favor with all the people. The Lord added to the church. He calls them the church. Daily, such as should be saved. The family of faith. Galatians 6 verse 10. Where we get the word household of faith. Very powerful scripture. Then give us Hebrews chapter 10 verse 25. I'm giving you scriptures like this because I want to support what I'm teaching intelligently. There are all kinds of people. We minister to people from different nations now. If Let me teach you this. This is a place for mentorship. So we believe in excellence. But I want you to learn the motivation behind the things that I do. You see, when you begin to mentor people who come from different geographic and cultural contexts, I can talk to all of you without bringing one scripture because there is a track record of your understanding my pattern of teaching are we together you know that every time i speak i will support it but maybe in france or the u.s or somewhere someone right now who may be heathenistic is listening and just has a bible or an unbeliever a muslim who just gave his life to christ so you will need to support these points they may look basic to you oh one point is enough apostle i'm convinced but i'm not just talking to you alone when you begin to minister at a global level you must have the patience and the simplicity to carry the larger crowd of people along otherwise a time will come your doctrine will only be understood by those who are close to you and that is because of the track record you have created are you getting this now so galatians 6 verse 10 it says as we therefore as we have therefore opportunity let us do good to how many men all men but it says let your focus be on a community of believers this those who are of the household of faith you encounter god through a spiritual community life let me tell you this you have a spiritual family just like a physical family and the spiritual family of course ultimately is our family connected to god but on earth and territorially you will never prosper spiritually if you are not connected to a larger body of a spiritual family god designed it that way are we together there are all kinds of spiritual possibilities that are vested broadly speaking in the body of christ but uniquely speaking to the spiritual family that god connects to you friends revelation access to anointing access to help there are many believers when they are in trouble for instance and they need to see the mercy of god there is no man and there is no community to come and reveal the mercy of god to them someone dies you are alone nobody to come and greet you you give birth to a child nobody you are not part of any larger body of believers that can be sympathetic to what you are doing when you need to see the hand of God, you are not connected to anyone. Most times when people come and talk to me and say, Apostle, this is uh, somebody, a member of Koinonia and all of that. Most times I ask, what department? He says, uh, I'm not in any department, but I can assure you I'm faithful. He says, uh, you are marking yourself already. How do you know you are faithful? Community life is very powerful when it has to do with experiencing God. A, a spiritual family shields you there are some of us here right now physically you almost don't have a family either everybody has died or everybody is completely wayward and not of god or everybody hates you and already you are just like a prodigal son but for a good reason until you find god don't come back home are we together some of us are unbelievers we are the first christians in our family so you really don't have you can't stand there in isolation look at this how many of you have seen charcoal burning coal burning red hot coal remove one red hot one and just keep it don't off the uh, what they call it now just leave it there don't pour water on it after a while what happens it starts going down so the strength of that fire was the community life notice that every time 
satan wants to destroy a life one of the ways is he will make everybody in your community your enemy he will make you to have problem with everyone your head of department apostle anybody when all your helpers have been driven through your hatred when you are alone it's not only god that comes to jacob when he's alone satan too comes when you are alone he can come to you and say now that the person who can pray for you is gone now that the sister that can support you you have you have hated her and you have insulted her i can now strike you and your pride will not allow you run to them so you will stay there till they find your dead body spiritually community life is powerful are we together now when the believers were afraid and they were persecuted imagine if all of them hid one by one they went somewhere and stayed alone even in times of crisis as in physically speaking the security when people are clustered within an area it becomes even if they are afraid it becomes difficult for the enemy to just break every siege there some of us stand alone and do everything alone and we flatter ourselves into believing that we are strong my bible says two are better than one is that true the bible says then when they become three they become a, a cord that cannot be easily broken community life is a powerful system to have an experience of god when you come into the sanctuary there are dimensions of god that you ordinarily would not have gotten in your personal place of prayer but God reveals himself as the word of God is coming now as you look at your brother someone taking the testimony promise is coming to take the testimony you are learning something about God somebody is doing this you are learning something they raise a song of worship you see a Jimmy worshiping wow so great men can worship God this vocally you are what the the worship team revealing the excellence of God there are things you will never learn just sitting down in your room are we together Listen, let me tell you this. Let us encourage, and, and, and I'm saying this from a personal point. Encourage your children to have a desire for the house of God. Not just the things of God. There are families here that come as a family for koinonia. I truly am honored when I see that. Because it's, it's not just a sacrifice. They are salvaging a generation especially some of these are young children some of them hate god the devil is planting a seed of hatred in them have you seen them they come to the house of god they never enter and sit down they stroll around they they hang around they move around they are making calls they are doing this if they say something that is funny they laugh outside and then they turn they continue you give them offering they go and buy uh, uh what do we call it puff puff around and they are eating let's not let's not it's not a laughing matter it's a sign that we are losing something are we together the house of god so you go home now and you say let's pray see the child frowning his face he's coming to sit down it's time for prayer i say please this prayer that they are lying in this house is better to be lying with prayer it's better community life community life Hebrews 10 25 Hebrews 10 25 not forsaking the assembling of ourselves together as the manner of some is he said but exhorting one another and so much the more as he see the day approaching are we together that we should not forget and forsake the assembling of ourselves you've heard me listen to my message um preservers of divine ordinances part one and two i teach there that any spiritual environment is bankrupt if there is no platform that can create a convergence of believers for the purpose of training equipping and mentorship you can look at a territory and know that there are no apostolic and prophetic voices because there is no platform honored by god you see his signature there 
as a prophetic platform that has nothing to do with denominational barriers you know that this one is god making his presence known mentoring a territory to know him it's not just tied to i am this i'm that i'm apostle this i'm prophet this i'm apostle joshua Selma. no there has to be a, a platform where believers are mentored where they grow are we together let's read one more scripture hebrews chapter 3 verse 12 and 13 and then we'll move to something that i think um we can just stop at point one i don't know i don't know let's see how god will help us so you have an experiential revelation of god that's the first key and that by his word number one number two by the presence your participation in the household of faith hebrews chapter 3 from verse 12 take heed brethren look up please lest there be any of you let there be in any of you an evil heart of unbelief in departing from the living god next verse 13 but exhort one another how long exhort one another not exhort god exhort one another that means i have a role to play in your spiritual growth you have a role to play in my life you will think that because i am the one who is majorly building you you don't have any role he said exhort one another daily while it is called today lest any of you be hardened through the deceitfulness of sin that means something happens come pastor femi that pastor femi can be a powerful believer but in isolation to the supply of the body are we together now there is no system of exhortation he may not even know when he has veered off sincerely and not know but that the presence of the corporate body is a spiritual system for check and balance are you getting what i'm saying now you may not know you may be busy pastor femi and maybe have two months of ministration all around and not have the time to pray for instance and you may be justifying yourself but when you come now and see that i'm busier than you and yet i'm still praying by that act i have exhorted you i have killed the excuse the devil wants to take to say i am busy you go back and say no if i'm just doing one ministration per week and it's affecting my prayer life someone that is doing three are you seeing that now yeah the moment you want to become proud and arrogant i just got one million and then you come and turn and you see a jimmy lying down ah and you say how much is his shirt how much is his shoe you just say i, I better drop my my small one million that is entering my head and lie down and roll before god you are exhorting you don't just exhort by talking your life shows it too when you see people that love god more than you rolling on the ground sometimes you don't plan to roll but when you look around ah benga is kneeling ah daddy prof is kneeling Ejimi is rolling promise is rolling you turn back sam is kneeling you will feel stupid as what i say do you better join and kneel down those outside are falling more than those inside are we together yes it is the absence of this corporate life that makes local champions leave god there is no system have when when you start making money and you go where wealthy people are worshiping god they throw their phone away and roll on the floor you just stand and say this is my boss this is the person that gave me the job that i've been testifying i heard she was a millionaire before i was born so this is how this woman rose before God. You call your wife and say, wife, we will roll on that carpet. Roll on the ground. Sometimes you need someone higher than you to show you how to serve God. Because you see, every time you have results, sometimes they confuse you. How do I serve God at this new level? And God says, come to the house of God. I started prophesying and right now one month everybody's placing a demand on my grace and then god says oh yeah come and meet a prophet who started prophesying before you were born again and see how he serves god and all of a sudden you are dancing i got an award and this award is this and that and god says come let me show you the person who owns the company that gives the award and how he's serving god corporate life does so much 
many things happen in this service beyond the pulpit you can have a heart of wickedness to annoy a brother or sister and all of a sudden they use their kindness and torture you all through the service you say nasty things they say no problem it's well this is my seat is no, no, okay sit down and while they sit down favor just come somebody says sit, sit here every bad thing you are doing god is speaking to you in that service with results your message in that service becomes look it is it is good to be good this bad attitude work on it you will be surprised i may be teaching on the anointing but that's the message you came to the house of god there are many believers that are not like Christians because they are alienated from the house of God. They cannot, do you know that the house of God even helps you to speak well? I mean educationally, I'm not talking of spiritually. Many dull people around who have alienated. When you listen to a man, you listen to a people that have some measure of excellence, do you know that it will affect you? Many people, look at our look at the children in koinonia you see how intelligent they are because they are gleaning from adults they go back and meet their their colleagues who don't they are not smart they they, they just fail everything like that and say ah, what is wrong that's why the children of pastors are very intelligent because from birth everybody holding them is praying or speaking or blessing they don't have the opportunity for wickedness to touch them that's why satan keeps timing them you are in the house of God. Turn to your neighbor and say this and that. Turn to your neighbor and do this. You can even help socialize. You came from a bad background where you even hate yourself. You came to the house of God. And you are somebody who is shy. You can't turn and tell somebody God bless you. And before you know it, someone carries his hand, gives you a big hug. And you are like, ah, so this is how this thing is. By next Sunday, you are ready. Come on now, talk to me, Koinonia. Watch this. The first person who ever hugged you was somebody in the house of God. And you felt so bad, you thought there were strings attached until they told you that's how they are here. And you say, really? And somebody looks at you and says, the Lord told me. You never knew that God can speak to men to bless you. But someone just turns and says, Pastor Femi, um, I don't know, are you a first timer? Yes. The Lord asked me to give you 10,000. Whereas you came, God told you to leave your house and come by faith that someone will pay your transport. If you didn't come to the house of God, you will never experience God that way. Are you getting what I'm saying? When you neglect the gathering of the saints, it is not the same thing as listening to a tape. There are things your eyes need to see. There are things your ears need to hear. I believe it's even one of the reasons, eh, Jimmy, why our generation keeps marrying bad wives and husbands. Where are you going to get a good wife? Let's be very sincere. Your chances of getting a very good God, remember, you need to marry somebody who believes what you, are, what you believe. You pray in tongues and somebody say, I'm calling police. Is, is that marriage? How? Oh. Or the man wants to sow and say, for what? How much are we earning that we're going to sow? Because you don't understand these principles. Take seriously what I'm saying. Many believers, I, I don't know, sometimes I don't know what is wrong with us. We come and we sit down and then we go outside, go and ship all versions of unbelievers, bring into our lives and the devil said, thank you. That one thing I've been looking for to cheat you in life, you finally gave me. Ah, the brothers in church are not nice. The sisters in church, let me tell you, it's better to die in church. Oh. Let me just give you a very honest statement. Because God is always found in the midst of the lampstands. If a brother slaps you in church, there's somebody he submits to, you can report. If your if you're wicked bubble somewhere slaps you, who will you report to? His father. Listen. Hallelujah. Sit down. As, as you are hearing me, you see God is saying many things this night. But there are many stubborn believers that as God is talking now, you have programmed your spirit to be as hardened as whatever. May you be delivered this night in the name of Jesus. 
around any, any unbeliever somewhere, just go and fool you and laugh around and say, oh, don't mind all these God people. You are going to your church again. Haba, you can't make this sacrifice for me. That's already a Luciferian spirit. It's a revelation to run away fast. He has not married you. He is, he's, he's stopping. He's resenting a man of God. The man of God that is training and building you. He's saying, oh, don't mind all these people. And you are truly, you are not minding them. Say the house of God. People have gotten jobs because of their connection. Is that true? With Christian families. Please learn this thing. Many of our loved ones are suffering in pride because there is a dimension of the love and the mercy of God in the house of God that they have ignored. By God's grace, in this ministry, as you know, we have a system that provides help for people. It may be in limited ways, but at least we make sure we do. There are people just being members of Koinonia, their school fees were settled till they graduated. They didn't come from families that could allow that. And they saw the love of God. And it's not necessarily that it was me that paid it. Some of them just came together. Ah, this is your final year. You got born again in January. Oh, it's better than nothing. You are welcome. So what's the issue now? My school fees. How much do you have? 1,000. How much is left? 40,000. No. Believers, let's come together. Let me tell you. Don't let anybody make you hate the church. Hear what I'm saying. Don't let... I know that we have issues. I'm not saying we don't have issues. Are we together? But don't make anybody... When we started this ministry, our fun, our jokes, our time out, everything was among believers. It's why you see the marriages in this ministry very solid and powerful. Are we together? Very solid and powerful. Is God speaking to you? Stability through fellowship. That God is revealing, he's, he's experientially revealing himself. Please, sisters, let me say it again. Don't marry anybody. Don't even say yes. Don't say let's try two months or two months. No, don't even do one day. Don't marry anybody that is not connected to any spiritual family. Even if he tells you he's born again. I repeat, don't marry any man. Insult me, but just listen any man this i love you i love you thing this we're in the end times the devil is 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 destroying people's destinies you will be unfair not just to yourself but to the children that are coming out of you that's how you have all these people go around deceiving these girls that they are christians before you know it the moment they get married they say i hope you know you understand that me when it's cold i take a, 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 a this thing and the lady saying, I never saw, I said, is this just because I gave a little break? The, the house of God has a system that ensures you get it right. Well, it's my job to teach and say what I'm saying. It's your own job to listen and hear what I'm saying as a word from the Lord or stubbornly decide to do whatever you want. I will always pray for you even if you crash land. I have loved you with an everlasting love. But my advice is that it is better to be happy by listening. Are we together? Thank you, Pastor Femi. Number, number three, still on point one. Remember, I'm teaching on the keys that create stability in your work with God. And the first point we said was an experiential revelation of God. And we broke it down into a few points. Number one is that the word of God can help you experience God. Number two, the family of believers. Are you ready for number three? Number three. Now hold on please. Pay attention here. If this is where we stop tonight, then media, this becomes part one. Are we together? This becomes spiritual stability part one. I doubt if we'll be able to finish because there are four points. But the third way... Of knowing God experientially is through your pain and challenges write it down I want to seriously teach here Psalms 107 we're going to read verse 6 verse 13 verse 19 and 28 6 13 19 28 actually the whole verse there I want to make you love your past tonight not necessarily 
past and all you know many times we men of god teach hate the past leave it yes but i want to show you there is something from your yesterday that can reveal the god of your tomorrow they cried unto the lord when not in their comfort they cried unto the lord in their trouble and what did he do he came in as a deliverer next verse verse um what now 13 please give us verse 13 still 107 psalms 13 they cried unto the lord again in their trouble what did he do he didn't deliver them he saved them are you seeing different dimensions they cry unto the lord their trouble makes them to cry unto the lord let me tell you this brothers and sisters i hate to be a bearer of bad news but there is something about your pain and the knowledge of god there is a relationship between your tears there is a relationship between your challenges and your disappointments and the unique revelation of god to you hmm. pain and challenges force force us to need and prioritize god write it down your pain and your challenges they have a way of forcing you to need and prioritize god there are many of us it's not that you have left god but sincerely he's not a priority and so certain times when when certain things shake you and hit you all of a sudden you will remember that there i, I need to run back to god I need to make things right with them. I don't believe that God goes around causing people pain and sorrow. No, the Bible says every good and perfect gift. But because of our human nature, God utilizes every unfavorable moment. Let me tell you, a spiritual man is one who can turn both glory and pain into something that helps him to know God. We have this we have this um we have this level there there's something about believers we frown at pain when believers go through challenges and sometimes the church again we are the ones who bring these kinds of things come sam all of a sudden something happens to sam maybe he loses a loved one are we together and god forbid sam just an example and or something happens to him there's disappointment somewhere and you hear believers come Ah, ah Sam, didn't you hear God? What this didn't this happen? Didn't this happen? Whereas God is, is taking advantage of that opportunity to say, Sam, I'm bringing you to a point where there is something about me you otherwise would not know. If he did not go to the cave of Adullam, David would never know certain things about God. Please listen to what I'm saying. If you started that ministry from day one and 1,000 people came, you will never believe God is a God of process. And so, with all your anointing for the first one year, only two members. The day you did your thanksgiving, four came, two left before the service was over. And you just called your wife. Your wife said, my husband, I've never doubted you, but Kai, today, let me tell you the truth. I know that when you told me God called you, it's not, I'm using, I'm using husband, I'm using a... Come, wife now watch this i've never doubted you you said god god called you i say yes he called are you not seeing what I've, is it not is it not my my anointing that that made your your father sick that he allowed me to marry you why when i what are you, you are doubting me today and then all of a sudden the man is now touched and said lord if my own wife that is the surest member of my church is about to leave you better speak to me oh did you call me watch this that seven days dry will lead you to call on to god and god just comes and says son write this i it is true i have anointed you to speak my purposes to the nation a b c d where you will now be dancing celebrating 10 years anniversary when it's your time to give the testimony you are now going to say look i know that god is the lifter of men and you see the wife crying because she knows the other members are just laughing they came into the inheritance of the promise but the woman is standing there come darling 
are we together ah we want to thank god for our mother our this and she's just looking at them lord thank you if i left now this out i buried my head in shame thank you jesus you have wasted your pain and your challenges and never knew god through them you conquer challenges not by having a way out but by seeing god in them in every challenge there is a dimension of god that is waiting to be revealed listen brothers and sisters in every challenge there is a dimension of god there are dimensions of god you may never know though he slay me yet will i trust him there are things you hear me say casually about god today brothers and sisters is because of the abundance of what i've gone through there are things that you can hear us say at the beginning of this ministry remember i told you how things didn't work there were times that i prayed i fasted i sowed seeds i've said it you've heard me say it again all my scholarships were spent on the kingdom never spent anything on myself there are times that my heavens will close oh god is this tithing working or not so when you see somebody come and say apostle i've been tithing since january say just january and you are complaining <laughs> just january and it's not like the favor closed it's just that it's not yet enough you better thank god and keep moving there's something you know let me tell you when you are too innocent in life you can't be sent um not i i, I no, the word is i hope i hope you understand what i mean by innocent when you are scarless you can't be sent there is a level of scar that must be on you as a testament you are never please help those under the anointing there you can never represent god scarless there is a mark that is a testament are we together now yes you've never been disappointed in your life you've never had to cry in your life you've never had to lock the door to pray and as a man of god just kneel down and say lord i don't hate you but right now i don't know what to say don't mind all these people that lie all around and make it look like they've been laughing forever it's a lie even jesus wept say it after me jesus one more time jesus the son of the living god the word that creates everything got to a point in his life where is a father imagine if that part of jesus was not captured for us we'll feel guilty whenever we cry in the midst of challenges but today someone can lose a loved one and while we come we'll not just say why didn't you have faith we will continue to teach on life but we can join together and cry and not feel bad apostle you are crying that somebody died well what happened to the anointing that you walk with no problem you may laugh at me but i i have i have learned something with god that he's not just a mighty god he can also be touched with the feelings of our infirmity so i will not just preach life and run away from you when you lose your loved ones and say no 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 we are, we are life-giving spirits no we are life-giving spirits but there are women who died and didn't receive the promise and the bible joined all and called it faith so we will cry together are we together oh you come and all of a sudden you say look apostle this and that and that and that this and that i mean you know not to feel bad but i mean look at this is how my life is i made a stupid decision i i carried my salary and all of a sudden somebody scammed me and this happened i'm just you are stupid i've been drumming divine direction no compassion pain and challenges reveal a dimension of god to you and through you that no other thing no other dimension of kingdom living can reveal there are some of you here god will allow you purposely to stay without food so that the day you become a multi-millionaire you can look at a family and they can say apostle do you know we love god but as it is there's no food this night you will say well maybe i have prophesied to you what else are you waiting for no compassion is not natural with the natural man something must happen to a man to make him compassionate there's nothing like i'm naturally kind no it is life that can bring someone to his knees there are some of you here for instance you by your normal standard you probably would have been doing phd now 
or even be professors but some of you you are in 300 level right now it may look like it's a disadvantage but there is something through that pain that is revealing god tomorrow when you see somebody going through things and people say this yeah yeah guys say no i've been there you know why i don't talk against men of god they've persecuted me and they do it every time i know the pain of being persecuted i know the pain of being lied about i know the pain of being misunderstood so i will never sow that seed not to you not to anybody that's why i never insult the body of christ when you hear people do that they are still innocent let them continue growing i know the pain of what it means to see a young man with influence like this and say maybe they are using charm or demonic power no I know the pain of people trivializing your sacrifice. Everybody say pain. Say challenges. A lady that has entered five or six relationships and has been disappointed by all those brothers, gave her heart, gave her all, and those brothers just made life miserable for her. It may be bad, but if you can see Christ through your pain, the sight of him will wipe your tears all of a sudden. And you'll say thank you. After all I've been through, I still have joy. I still have joy. I still have joy. After all I've been through, I still have joy. What have you gone through in life? Hold on. I want to ask you a question, everyone listening to me what have you gone through in life that has made you matured what have you gone through in life that has stopped you from insulting men what have you gone through in life man of god that will make money not to move you what have you gone through in life how many of you know that there is a way life whips you that even when you see the result you don't celebrate much again because you started celebrating without the result you are already used to it so if someone buys a car you just say lord thank you and then you go back and say lord who should i give it to god says, oh, you can enjoy this one and it doesn't move you because you have learned to rejoice in the midst of pain i show you a, a this is a very mature spiritual teaching i believe in prosperity i will continue to speak over your life to be blessed i remember one dear lady years ago one of our, our dear, well not really part but a dear lady it was a few weeks to her wedding when something happened cards had been out several things happened i mean everybody was rejoicing like every other lady she was happy ready to rejoice and then something just went terrible cut the long story short wedding was cancelled i remember when i got the text in my mind i said no my, all i was thinking about is this lady because the same friends that were dancing are the same ones that will run and say ah so you see that that's the thing you do you know this is a dimension of god through men that you need to learn that he's truly a friend that stick it closer than a brother someone who can stand and say i will be with you and all of a sudden the moment they say crucify him they will join the people and say crucify you Many of us don't have the wisdom of the spirit because our lives are too innocent. That's why you trust anybody anyhow. That's why you do anything anyhow. Please listen to what I'm teaching you tonight. Are we together? I remember calling the lady. When I called her, as soon as she picked my call, she started crying. Because people had called her were disappointed. Why didn't you find out A and B and C and D? All kinds of nonsense. See, men, ba, you need to love God to love men. Men can be so wicked, you will be justified to hate them. Are we together? I called that dear lady. I said, sweetheart, where are you? I said, I need to see you. Let's meet in the night. And in her mind, she thought, you know, most times when people hear my messages, they believe that I'm a disciplinarian with all versions of whips. I'm not a stupid person. Are we together? Yes. God gives anointing, but our brains are still there. We are human beings. When I teach, I teach in a preventive way. That's why sometimes you can see I can lash it, but when you are meeting people one-on-one, -on -one, you are dealing with real-life issues. We are humans. It doesn't mean it's not an excuse for you not to listen. To just say, okay, so since there's another dimension. 
there is hellfire and there's mercy too all created by God are we together I remember calling that lady and when she came I was seeing her inside a car and the first thing I did was to just hug the lady and she began to cry and I didn't say a word I just allow sometimes don't stop people from crying too early these tears you see is not just what comes out in her eye it's a language and this lady said apostle why would God do this to me and I said no every time we don't understand God we give thanks it's something I learned through my own pain it's not like I, I learned it before I read it in the Bible whenever you don't understand God just give thanks why me is not a wise thing Lord why is my church not growing why did this and that and that happen you give thanks I remember comforting that dear lady and I told her something I said every time God closes a window check well a door is about to open and I remember when that lady was going to get married oh it was with honor it was with joy you know the kind of joy that will make you forget the pain of yesterday listen let me speak to someone there are many of you who you have not learned to see God in your pain you have not learned to see God in your challenges I'm encouraging you tonight when you look back don't look at the problems continue to look Mary Magdalene was looking at a graveyard and she saw Jesus there Jesus is also in the grave he's not just on the throne she came to the grave and was looking who goes to the grave only dead men there are no living people in the grave but when you stand through that grave you can see Jesus looking at you to say you may have been abused when you were young you may have gone through all kinds of things but don't be ashamed of it I am raising you with an anointing tomorrow you are going to have a foundation one uncle deceived you here and don't worry and all of a sudden you are healed you are strengthened and you can rise up and be a blessing as believers both our glory and our pains are still weapons that can bring him glory is God speaking to someone today sometimes I share some of the testimonies of yesteryears not because I'm stupid everybody has his reputation too I share some of these things and it's amazing how some of these messages comfort some of you because if you just see all the things that God is doing today you may think just because you are anointed you are shielded from it nobody is immune from tears Jesus wept every other person in him will weep too there are times that life can push you I've wept at funerals of people here I have had to comfort people we have lost loved ones things have happened around but even at that even when we cannot explain we still say Lord thank you Lord thank you can you lift your voice in one minute and just say Lord thank you even in the midst of the pain in the midst of the pain Lord I went through unfavorable things I trusted a man who disappointed me I trusted my boss he disappointed me Lord I thought by now I would have graduated and standing before me are five carryovers I thought I would get first class my last result I thought I would be promoted and I was driven but I give you thanks I give you thanks I may not understand what you are doing in and through me but Lord I know that you do all things I will sing, I will praise, even in my darkest hour, through the sorrow and the pain, I will sing.
your pain that made you to begin to love people. Yes, sir. You were too innocent and when you see people just complain, oh, my father could not afford my school fees. What an irresponsible father until the day your own father lost him, a job and you found out for the first time that dinner could not come. And God said, have you now seen that if I don't help a man, it's not just being irresponsible. Your father is responsible. Yet, except the Lord builds a house, they labor in vain. Let me tell you this. My father calls me a young man with gray hair. My experiences in life have added to my experience. Added to my age. That's why you see me respect elderly people. I am not stupid. There are some of you here, when you see us honor people, you say, what is there? Because your blood is hot. They paid your school fees. They gave you pocket money. You entered 100 level. By the end of 100 level, you have gotten a scholarship. Your result came out 4.5. Your perspective is too innocent to be used. Keep coming. One day, something will happen. By the time you graduate and for five years, there's no job. You will now know why people write prayer requests here. For now, you say, ah, what is there about prayer requests every month? It's because everything in your life is paid for. The day your father look at you and say, young man, after this month, as we are clocking 30th of this month, you are packing your load and you are going. And you will think he has an honorarium for you. He will just wave you and say, my old father just did bye bye and I, the same thing I'm doing for you. And for the first day, you will sleep under a tree. That's the day you open your Bible and say, no, I must get this thing. Yes, sir. Don't waste your pain. Some of you would have entered certain anointings by now if only you could look at God through your pain. There is, the Bible says, for we know. The rest may not know, but we know that all things. How many things? Talk to me. Say all things. All things. Work together. Apostle, what kind of life is this? I graduated since 2013. I've been loving God. There's no work now for me. Is it that I don't serve God? Apostle, I love God. I love the things of God. But not one guy in my whole life, there's no gentleman that has come to say, ah, you're a beautiful lady I want to. Am I cursed? <clears throat> it's because you are becoming a mother of nations, not a wife. And so God is saying, I need you to have the kind of compassion that will be required for a mother of nations. Today I can minister to people because every time I want to be wary, there is always something God can use from my past. People say apostle is humble. I'm not humble. It's a revelation of God that has kept me like that. The moment I want to lift up my head, God just has to show me one vision of one night I could not afford Gary. And I say, where, where is the pride coming from? Your past can help you maintain your glory. Your past has something in it that can help you keep your glory. When you see a man of God blessed and consistent and stable, there is nothing that is natural like that. There are many of you, you will not have listened to God. Every time they talk to you, you are stubborn towards instruction. So God allowed you. And for one year, like the prodigal son, you went away from mentorship and instructions and you saw the casualties that it brought to your life and now god comes back again and says can i now help you and you say lord please i will never leave you again are we together we'll stop here tonight make it part one we have part two there, there there's something very deep that i want to share i'll share with you next week or whenever whenever it is that we have the opportunity listen to me brothers and sisters I made certain covenants with my life at certain seasons of pain not luxury there were things I went through in my life and I vowed to God I said Lord if you ever prosper me I will not let one person die of hunger in my presence I would not have said that if money and all these resources just came cheaply I may be part of those like you people running your mouth at every family irresponsible people look how simple it is to prosper so there are times God can allow you you go through this you pray you fast no door opens so that when he blesses you with 10 naira 
and says give that 10 naira here you don't want people to lick your shoes just because of that there are certain anointings there are people who got certain impartations early in life you see that early in life and it made them proud what is there about this in fact right now i can even show that the power of god will move one two three four and they make all kinds of things mismanagement of the anointing then one day god will leave them and you find out for one year it looked like your heavens were closed you're going for a meeting you live there asking did god call me in the midst of your pain god begins to show you the visions of the foolishness and the pride you insulted every man of god because you had more revelation than your local pastor you insulted him all this 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 dull reverend doesn't know anything and god kept watching when that heaven closed towards you God will now say go and meet that reverend for prayer he's the one who will open your heavens and you drag yourself in shame like somebody that has finished fighting wrestling and the reverend looks at you and say you I had you talk nonsense God say you better apologize there when you learn it like Samson the anointing comes back again but this time around you know the value of the anointing because you believe that you you are too precious you won't lose it you kept reading books that ah, this and that happens the day it left you you don't need to ask whether it goes again you learned a lesson by yourself there are some of us who were very innocent we insult every mother you see somebody's mother insult the mother and say Kai, this woman said this and that i sat down near her ah, she didn't put any perfume Kai, what kind of a smelly in your this coin on here and god is saying no problem it's because you had a father who was a this and that all of a sudden another government will come and they won't give him appointment and your friends will say ah where's our jeep now he said no jeep again no. and then when they leave you like the prodigal son then you come back to your senses and the next time god gives you a jeep you don't just say come and see jeep you say come and see god's faithfulness it will suddenly become god's faithfulness no longer jeep We're going to pray tonight. I don't know what, what pain you may be going through now. And you are saying, Lord, if you called me, why am I going through this? I'm answering you right now. Lord, why is my life like this? And God is saying, I'm bringing glory. You have called me as a kingdom financier. Lord, I've never held 50,000 of my money. And God says, I need to teach you that. Listen, let me tell you. When God called me into the apostolic ministry, there are few challenges of people I didn't go through. How else do you relate with people? Are we together? There are times people will bless me and God will ask me to sow it. And when I sow it, I'm alone. And I'm saying, God, what is this? Somebody refused to tighten me, I'm tightening my own heavens, come and you ask me to carry it. And what is that? And it's amazing how God doesn't answer. There are times that God's silence is a training process. It may not be an attack. He's teaching you how to wait. Lord, will you arise? Based on the Bible studies you did, they say if you call him, he is nigh those who call upon him. Yes, it's true. But he's training you. You teach someone how to call God, he's enjoying an express service with God, and you, the tutor, is there under closed heavens and hazy hearing. lord what is this i've been married for five years no child lord what i mean what is the meaning of this you are calling me into ministry and no child and then god says prophesy to all the barren women ha ah, god what embarrassment is this one again and he says do it he's killing the flesh you may not know it's not about a child god can give you a child even in one week he's killing the flesh Holy, holy, holy. Holy, holy, holy. Holy, 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 holy. Holy, holy, holy. Faithful, faithful, faithful. Faithful, 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 
And you will see the power of God in your life in a way that you'll be surprised. Imagine that you are sleeping and all that is playing is a powerful prophecy. Let me tell you what will happen. You will continue listening to it in your dreams. I guarantee you. And that one is powerful because your body that limits the spirit is sleeping. Ah, you will access anointings. You will wake up under a strong presence. I know what I'm saying. Number two, let's hurry up. The second challenge or the second key, I think the rain is settled, so as many, if it's not an interruption, please um, arrange them outside. If they can still squeeze in, that's all right. Number two, let's hurry up, please. The reality of demon spirits and the character of their operation, write it down, is something you cannot ignore and prevail in this life. The reality, demon spirits, alongside the character of their operation. The Bible again and again cautions us and says that we should not be ignorant of his devices. Satan has a way he operates. There is a way, there is a system that Satan operates. Anybody who ignores the reality of demon spirits alongside an, an insight into the character of their operations will pay the price severely. Let's look at two scriptures very quickly. Luke chapter 4, please, verse 14 and 18. Media help us. Luke 4, 14 and 18. The Bible says Jesus took the scroll, right? He, the messianic prophecy. And um, go to verse 15, please. Next verse. 15. And he taught in their synagogues being glorified of all 16. You are reading down to 18. And he came to Nazareth where he had been brought up. And as his custom was, he went into the synagogue on the Sabbath day and stood up for to read. Right? What did he read? Then it was given to him. It was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Esaias. And when he had opened the book, he found a place where it was written. The Messianic prophecy. 18. The spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because he had anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. To bind up the broken hearted. To preach what? Deliverance to the captives. There are people under captivity. The reality of demon spirits in our world and the fact that they influence people, Christians and unbelievers alike, should not be ignored. Are demons real? The Bible says so. Is Satan real? The Bible says so. Do they oppress people? Yes. Luke chapter 10 verse 19. Behold, I give you power, authority. The word there is exousia. Behold, I give you power, Luke 10, 19, to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. So there is the enemy and the enemy has a measure of power. Are we together? And he says, and nothing shall by any means harm you. Look at me, please. Look at me, Koinonia, look at me. Every time Jesus commissioned people, the first thing he told them to do was to cast out demons. Not heal the sick. Cast out demons. Right? When you read, um, let's look at a, a scripture. Mark, Mark 6. We'll read verse 7, then we'll run to 13 quickly. Mark 6, 7, 13. And he called unto him the 12. Read on, please. It's projected. And did what? And began to send them forth two by two. He gave them power to do what? Clean spirit, on holy spirit, spirits that are out of the influence of the Holy Spirit. They are called unclean spirits. They are everywhere, like the air we breathe. They are responsible for the anger problem in people. Are we together? 
they are responsible for the barrenness in people. They are responsible for delay and retrogression. They are the ones who appear to you in dreams and sleep with you. They are the ones who appear and cause miscarriages. They are called unclean spirits. Now, regardless of the theological stratification, they are still spirits. The Bible says, for we wrestle not against flesh and blood, right? But against what? Principalities, uh -huh. powers, rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in heavenly places. They are all called unclean spirits. And there are three ways that their, their ministry or their life found expression in the earth. Number one is covenants. It's the most powerful way demon spirits advance their cause. Covenants. Number two is ignorance. Ignorance of the precepts and the principles of God. The light shines in darkness. So when there is no light, darkness remains. Are we together? And then number three, disobedience. 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 Demon spirits are real. A Christian cannot be possessed, but he sure can be influenced. Absolutely. Galatians 5, when you read from verse 16, this I say then, walk ye in the spirit and the Bible. He was talking to the Galatian church, people who had already encountered Christ. Are we together? But this is what he says. This I say then that you walk in the spirit so that you will not gratify what? The desires of the flesh. Then he says the flesh lusted after the spirit. The spirit after the flesh. Two of them are consistently contending. What does that tell you? That you are a Christian does not mean that these demon spirits will not attempt to influence, manipulate or wage control over your life. There's nothing embarrassing when a Christian is delivered. The operation looks like possession, but it's not possession. And now this is the balance. I'm going to create a balance. Because there are all kinds of prophetic ministries. Because they do not have a sound word base. Right? And let me tell you something. Even the prophetic and the supernatural is limited by the recipient's understanding of the operation of the word. Are we together? I can be a genuine prophet of God, but because I do not have a sound understanding of scripture, I can look at this beautiful lady looking at me and see a spirit behind her. And based on my interpretation of that vision, I call her a witch. Are we together? And then I fabricate a strategy. And I say, Oga, the solution to dealing with this, your wife, seeing that she's a witch, is to leave her. So that is my... That is my advice based on my limitation. It may not be that I saw a wrong vision. But because my vision was not dealt with on the strength of the word of God. For correct interpretation. It's not enough to see. Understandest what thou readest. He was looking. He was not understanding. Demons are real. They are here in this place tonight. Are we together? They came with many people. They came with many families. Many well-meaning people carried them. Our job is to separate you from them. That's what deliverance is. It's a separation. Let me tell you something. In the most authentic definition, deliverance is salvation. Right? The most authentic, in its purest form, deliverance is salvation. It's a complete translation. So every other thing you do, is in support of that understanding. Demons are real. Let me tell you. You will be surprised to find out. How many things have not been working in your life. And can be credited to the ministry of these wicked spirits in our lives. There were many things in my life that didn't used to work for a long time. I tried. I did all I knew to do. But when I realized that. You see let me tell you something. Because demon spirits have an advantage. Hear me. Because demon spirits have an advantage of the realm of the spirit. When you try to fight in the flesh, you will be defeated forever. Every time, at all times, regardless of what you try to do. Someone promises to help you. You go to bed, a stranger appears again. 
The person gets up in the morning and tells you, I can't remember telling you what I said. Please get out of my office. Something made them do so. The same way there is an anointing that can call a destiny helper into your life. And you say, sorry, I don't need any help again. You say, God told me to do it. I don't like you, but I have to do it. Because something, may that thing, whatever thing it is, it must come upon you today. Yeah. Where men arise to make your life easy. Hallelujah. Demon spirits are real. Don't be embarrassed when you find out that these spirits are leaving you. Rejoice. And listen, please, don't just fall down and stand up and check yourself and feel embarrassed and then go back. No. And by the way, it has nothing, deliverance has nothing to do with falling down and manifesting. It has everything to do with the word of God prevailing over your person and casting out every nonsense that is roaming around your life. So you may be standing quietly and they are flying out of you, flying out of your destiny. The, when that, I'm teaching you this so that you will know what to expect and know how to appropriate it. So that when you leave this place, you now expect that that door that refused to open. Now that you know a spirit caused it, you expect it to open. So you start saying in the name of Jesus, I expect favor. I expect favor. A woman who has not been able to give birth, has not been able to take in. Husband is well, wife is well, both of you go to the hospital, they say there's nothing wrong as far as they know. Alright, take in madam. She cannot take in. Plants don't need consultation to take in. Animals don't need consultation. As have hazard as they are, the law still works. Because demons are not interested in the animals. They are interested in human beings. They are interested in your destiny. That's why they will refuse that you will not get that child. But the devil is a liar tonight. What of all those, all those lumps and all those nonsense that grow around your body? Lumps in your breast, lump in your stomach, lump every part. Movements around your body. What do you think is called? The Holy Spirit does not move in people in a foolish way. The Holy Spirit is, is, is he's an intelligent spirit. He does not oppress people. Do you know there are people here who cannot sleep? Young people, you, you, you watch them and they are still awake. Because the moment they close their eyes is a nightmare. Demons are real. The last key, number three. That the Lord will have us tonight to know. All of us must possess this if we really need result. It's your faith. Hmm. Your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith, your faith. Your faith. My faith reaches out to you. And I believe your word. Listen, let me tell you something about faith. Most of us, our understanding about faith is just for reception. But faith is also an instrument of defense. Ephesians 6 verse 16. Therefore holding forth the shield. Because there are times between prophecy and manifestation you will need to stand. Faith becomes the weapon you use to shield yourself. That when another word comes and says, Kai, can you imagine Pastor Alpha, is this thing really working? And then the shield of faith, you lift it. And you say, no way. I know that my Redeemer liveth is working. If it's working, show me the evidence. Faith is the substance of things hoped for. The evidence of things not seen. He says, above all, taking the shield of what? Faith. Wherewith ye shall be able to quench, quench, quench the fiery darts of the enemy. Listen, faith is the result of an understanding. Faith is the result of an understanding. It produces persuasion. It's from the Greek word pistis. Conviction. Based on an understanding. He says, but I know whom I have believed. And I am persuaded. Just like I'm persuaded that someone's testimony 
will turn around. I mean, somebody's life will turn around tonight. I am persuaded. Listen, it's not just what you do that produces result, but the faith that backs what you do. The conviction that backs what you do. Faith is powerful. The Bible says by it, the elders obtained a good report. So if you need a good report, you will need that faith to obtain it tonight. And there are many of us who are trusting God for good reports. You want to change the doctor's report. You want to change every kind of nonsense report that the devil has brought. It will take faith. It will take faith. Conviction. Say after me in the name of Jesus. Shout it everyone. Say in the name of Jesus. I believe in the power of God. I believe that nothing is impossible for God. And tonight. God. Through his spirit. Will birth my testimony. I believe that with all my heart. I came in. There were people in Abuja. My Bible uh, at the back of my Bible is full of all kinds of people's prayer requests. You cannot imagine people dropping their prayer requests. Apostle, please as you are going back, can we drop our prayer requests? All the way. Because there is a God that answers prayers. Please hear me, Koinonia. Tonight, like we prayed earlier on, I want you to get angry with the situation in your life. You see, I cannot make you tired of it. I can only encourage you. He said, woe to them who are this in Zion. The day you are tired, you will change. Let today be that day. Rise up on your feet, everybody. Go ahead and pray in the spirit. Lord, my time has come. Are you praying, Koinonia? Lord, this health thing, I can't remain sick forever. No. This SS genotype, this HIV, this cancer. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Just one more prayer point and then we'll begin to minister. I'd like you to say, Lord, grace to not doubt you tonight. Please lift your voice and pray. Don't be a doubter. Lord, I believe in you. Lord, I believe in you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let me add one more prayer point in our lives. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, whatever must come upon my life for me to move forward. Hold on. Let it come. And whatever must leave me, I have no loyalty to you. I don't care where you came from. Tonight I part ways with you forever. Lift your voice and pray. anointing that must land upon my life today. Every grace, every spirit, every dimension tonight you must come upon my life and everything that must leave me. I'm tired of any luggage upon my destiny. Come
Koinonia, are you praying? Those online, make sure you are praying. Right where you are at your home, so wherever you are streaming from. Hallelujah. 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 One of the graces I'm trusting God to come upon our life is grace for accelerated advancement. Listen, listen. There are many of us, our pace of movement is slow. You can't look at your life and say, A, B, C has happened within this time. It's not a good testimony. I'd like you to pray and say, Lord, I must move. Oh, I must move. There must be advancement. The overflows. Make sure you are praying. God is sharing you where you are. Yes, oh God, I'm parting ways forever. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Listen. Listen. You must contend with prophecy. Oh, this bad luck upon my life must leave. I was not cursed like that. Even if it's a curse, it must go. Are you hearing what I'm saying? It's a war unto them who are at in Zion. There is enough function tonight to deliver the result you desire, except you are not interested. If you truly are interested and you are angry enough, Tonight is not the time to spectate and pinch and gist. Anybody does that kind of thing for you tonight, know that the spirit is using that person. You can't come here and waste your time. Hallelujah. I'm about to pray for you. I'm about to speak. Please, I want you to pray. Mention every negative thing that you know has happened, patterns in your life that you know must change and say, God arise for me tonight. Lift your voice and pray. Lord, it must go over my family. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now listen. 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 Before God deals with our lives, we are going to be praying first and foremost that God will deal with our families. See, let me tell you something. It's not your fault that you came from that family. But it's your fault if you allow what came from there to destroy you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Believe what I'm saying, oh Koinonia. Believe what I'm saying. I love you too much to not lie to you. There are, there are ties and strongholds that are stopping people from rising. Lift your hands, everybody. Every high thing must come down. Every stronghold shall be broken. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. You wear the victor's crown. You overcome. Every high thing must come down. Every song shall be broken. Lift your hands. 
I want to pray. Now listen. Don't get too used to the fact that it's just about speaking and then people fall under the anointing and come be serious while prayers are going. Because it is at the word of God they respond. They are listening to me, I'm speaking. But until the command is given, there is nothing to confirm. I want to pray. Many of you will be very surprised. Open up your spirit. It's time for God to visit you and visit your families. Hallelujah. Lift your hands, please. My God. God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm seeing in the realm of the spirit pointed arrows. Listen. Pointed arrows. Pointed arrows. And on those arrows I see like papers placed on the arrows containing the names of people, names of families, names of territories. That's what the Lord is showing me right now. And we're going to pray. Listen. The power of God is going to come very strongly upon people. It's, it's not just you. But your family are we together and once that happens know that the time has come you pray it and declare that deliverance lift your hands i want to pray now father you brought us here to change lives change testimonies Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is giving me a very crazy instruction. Just lift your left hand. Be stupid. I've started my stupidity. Just follow me quietly. Just lift your left hand up to God and let me do the speaking. You don't have to say anything. Please, all those who I'm going to speak to now that the power of God comes on them, let's begin to have them outside. <sighs> Jesus. Father, in the name of Jesus, I pray right now. My God, I'm seeing so many people. I don't even know what I'm doing. I'm just responding to the Spirit. Lord, you ask us to lift our left hands up. Whatever that means. There are people. I see fire right now. It's going to begin to come on people. Lord, the moment that comes on their family, let there be massive deliverances. At the count of four, that will happen now. One, two, shaka patakata, three, four. Bring them out. Bring them out. Bring them out right now. Inside, outside. I'm seeing the spirit of God. There's fire moving to families. Please, let's save time. Shabatakarataya. At the word of the Lord, I place the word of the Lord. Upon that situation of witchcraft, inside, outside, it's over, it's over, it's over, it's over. I come with a word of prophecy. I prophesy as I've been commanded. Miracles, deliverances for families. Enough is enough, oh God. Bring them. There are so many people outside so many people outside all the overflows i see miracles it's like fire it's like fire hallelujah keep your hands down i'm seeing fire and it's going to come upon the heads of people and the lord is saying it is still the deliverance lord where are they where are they where are they Right now, all over the congregation, I prophesy it like fire. I see like an eruption, a volcanic eruption coming on the heads of people. The heads of people. Shake it, take it out. Where you are, the fire will meet you there. Where you are, where you are. The enemy has done this. We command every havoc. We command every havoc. I tell you, I see deliverance for many families. 
Say after me in the name of Jesus. Say in the name of Jesus. I command every spirit. Causing the tragedies. In my family. Be exposed now. Lift your voice and pray. Lift your voice and pray. The light shines in the darkness. The light shines in the darkness. As you are praying. The power of God will come upon you. As you are praying, the power of God will come upon you. Be exposed. The spirits eating of finances, eating of joy, eating of peace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I see written on this pulpit altars, and I want to pray. An altar is a platform erected by men that grants access to spiritual operations. Altars, 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 altars. At the count of seven, I tell you many people, this is not just families now. One, two, three, four, get ready. Five, six, seven, right now. Right now, right now, right now. Altars catch fire. Altars catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Catch fire. Shake it, take it, poro sotoba. Lift your hands, everybody. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. The Lord is asking me to call situations. The moment I call them, all those who are victims of it, the power of God will come upon them. Please, we are going to be fast. Right now I pray, the spirit of failure upon people. I'm seeing it. Lord, wherever they are, right now, at the count of three, let there be an exposition. One, two, Three, go, go, go. Failure, failure, failure. Causing failure in lives. Failure in destinies. Failure in ministries. Failure in business. Failure in academics. Every form of failure, fire is coming on it right now. Fire is coming on it right now. Inside, outside. No, you can't stand it. It's your deliverance. It's your word. It's your prophecy. It's your word. That's why you came. Failure. Lift your hands, everybody. I'm seeing chains. And the Lord is saying, let delay leave my people. That's what I'm hearing. Lord, where are those whose lives have been under one spot? Inside and outside. At the count of three, I like you to shout, Jesus, delay is leaving now. One, two, three. Go, 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 go. Delay, delay, delay of all kinds, of all kinds. 
Arato soto peketesh. Delay. Delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. All kinds of delay. Be broken now. Now. Let her go in the name of Jesus. Let her go. I break that chain now. 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 That chain of delay. That chain of delay is broken over your life. In the name of Jesus Christ. God is breaking delay. Listen. Hallelujah. I've prayed this prayer in this place before. And the Lord is asking me to pray it again. That the destinies of men can be exchanged. So that you are walking. But you are not living your destiny. It's like you are living another person's life. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. Please take this prayer seriously. It will do wonders in your life. Lift your hands. Inside and outside. And you watch what will happen now. Lord, I pray. My God, I'm telling you, all I'm seeing in this place is fire. Any man here, any woman whose destiny has been exchanged so that the life you are living is not your blueprint right now. Let the exchange, let there be another exchange, another exchange, another exchange. The power of God is coming on people right now. Right now, right now, release their destiny. Release that mother's destiny now. Release that mother's destiny now. My goodness. Kapata shatatata. It's your destiny. It's your destiny. You can't leave another person's script. Every witchcraft, every manipulation. I curse it now. I curse it now. I curse it now. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Lord is asking me to pray for people with strange movements in their body. I tell you, I feel fire. It's like people are literally bathing in fire. Strange movements. I want to pray. There are many ladies, many mothers under this category. Right now in the name of Jesus, I stretch my hands. Every stranger, there is a lady, you feel a physical snake, physical snake moving on your body. But right now in Jesus name, at the count of three, fire from the throne. Fire from the throne. I command those spirits roaming around the bodies of God's people. One, two, three, go, 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 go. Go now. Leave their bodies. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Strange objects. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please sisters lift your hands. I want to pray. A very powerful prayer for our sisters. The devil will prefer. To get one woman. To ten men. Because a woman is a gate in the realm of the spirit. I tell you, no power will stand. Something is about to jump out of somebody's life. Ah, yeah, yeah. Break every chain. Break every chain. Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Let her go right now. Your destiny must open up. In the name of Jesus Christ. Break every chain. Lift your hands, sisters. The 
there are many ladies here under several oppressions that's why many things are not working but sisters as surely as the lord lives at the count of three i like you to shout jesus you will be surprised to see what will happen to you are you ready one two three deliverance for you right now deliverance help them my goodness please help them gates 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 be broken gates be broken Kapataya. gates be broken gates be broken gates be broken I'm praying it again lift your hands every devil that came here with you must let you go lift your hands there are sisters there is already a programming on your destiny to fail a programming to be barren who is this God that can look into time wherever they are at the count of three may the power of God fish them out one two three take that fire take that fire take that fire i open your destiny every lady every sister you are a gate you are a gate in the realm of the spirit mighty deliverance mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough mighty breakthrough is over is over is over by the power of the holy ghost over 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 break every chain Break every chain. Yeah. Break every chain. Hallelujah. Now I want to pray for the brothers. Lift your hands. Listen, let me tell you. There is a spirit that makes men not to be productive. Hear me. It's a, it's, it's a mighty deliverance that will happen to many men right now pay attention there are men who are just going old there's nothing happening in their lives it's not your fault there are keys that have been withheld from you but that thief must be exposed lift your hands i want to pray ancestry that's the first thing we are dealing with the brothers brothers lift your hands i want to pray Many of you will be surprised to see what happens. Every spirit of ancestry, every spirit of inheritance over any brother here, stopping his advancement at the count of three, some of you will be very surprised. That fire will come on you. Are you ready now? One, two, three. Take it. Take it. Take it. That fire. Help them, please. Help them. My goodness. Kaparata kata. Brothers are coming under this unction. It's time to move forward. It's time to move forward. Help them. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. I cast that spirit. hallelujah God does this all the time and I don't know why God is doing this again <laughs> ah. if he did it before he can do it again Say. Listen, 
I see something strange happening. Strange happening. Strange happening in the spirit. And I'm seeing the spirit of the Lord moving. And God is saying he's visiting Easternans. Easternans, evil people. That's what I'm seeing. There are altars that need to be broken. Please pay attention. I'm about to pray right now. Wherever they are, always he will do it. You are from the east, get set. Be sensitive. Come on, you shouldn't be doing that. Shaparato kaparatia. Isanans. Lord, wherever they are, it will come like fire on you. You will be surprised to see what will happen to you now. The Spirit of God goes to the east. The Spirit of God goes to the east and is bringing deliverance. Deliverance. Strange deliverance. Evil people. Strange deliverance. By the power of the Holy Ghost. He's visiting your soil. Visiting your foundation. Visiting your soil. If he did it before. He could do it again. Same God back then. Same God right now. If he did it before. Abia, 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 Abia said, Shaka Tabarata, Abia, Abia, the Spirit of God is moving across Abia, miracles, breaking foundations. If he did it before, he can do it again. Same God back then. Hallelujah. Many of you wonder why God does these things. There are signs and wonders. He steps into, you will see the testimonies that will come from this thing. Strange visitation. Lift your hands, everybody. Joshua Selman. God, please. Lift your hands. Lift your hands. I'm walking in the spirit and I see a map. And the Lord is asking me to jump upon it. And I see Kaduna. Southern Kaduna. That's what I see. Right now, Lord, at your word, move. Southern Kaduna. Visiting men and women. That's what the spirit of God is saying. I speak it. I place the word of God upon it. Lord, go to that region right now. Southern Kaduna. Southern Kaduna from Saminaka to Zonkua. Everywhere. Move. Let the power of God touch people. Liberty for territories. Liberty for territories. No matter where you are, I'm telling you, Southern Kaduna, fire is falling. Fire is falling upon your soil upon your soil southern kaduna southern kaduna that's what i see southern kaduna connected to southern kaduna there is a miracle happening altars in southern kaduna i come against you by this apostolic and prophetic mantle leave god's people now Hallelujah. Listen, let me tell you this operation of the Spirit, I found it working in my life, is powerful. God just calls a territory, and everyone is like a digital spiritual system. It's not something you just do by guesswork. It's the spirit of God. 
the spirit of God. The spirit of God. God is still touching Kaduna people. I'm still hearing it in my spirit. God is still touching Kaduna people. There's no escape. Any family tied to any altar comes under fire. Any Kaduna family married to Kaduna living in Kaduna state Hallelujah. Please lift your hands while still pray. I want to pray for students now. Something miraculous will happen here now. I want to pray for students because I see conspiracy to short circuit people's performances. I'm going to pray. But there is a God in heaven with an all-seeing eye. And there is an unction he can release. I'm going to pray. Listen, let me tell you. You will be surprised to hear the testimonies that will come. The way God is working this night is very supernatural. If the power of God comes upon you, I want you to know that an angel is doing something over your result. Just hear what I'm saying. Hear what I'm saying. I'm speaking by the Spirit. Father, there are people whose results need to be worked upon divinely. And where are they? I see almost 45 people. Right now at the count of three. One. Results. Two. Three. Let the angels begin to move. As they move, it will affect you. As the power of God touches you, your result is being worked upon. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Inside and outside. Results, results. Carry over us. Receiving the mercy of God. Receiving the mercy of God. God upgrading CGPS. Upgrading CGPS. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. Take it. CGPS. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Supernaturally. By the creative power of prophecy. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Everything that has refused to let you smile. Hear me. That joy and laughter will not come out of your mouth. I stand tonight in the name of Jesus. I bring that thing under fire. Amen. I bring it under fire. Amen. I bring it under fire. Shake ta ta ta. I bring it under fire. Hallelujah. Lift your hands. Just lift your hands and be silent if you can. A miracle is happening. A miracle is happening. This is what I'm seeing. I'm seeing letters in the spirit. And these are employment letters. Hold on. Just keep your hands. Just do what I'm asking you to do. You will be surprised. Many of you for you and for your loved ones. The Lord is just asking. Just lift your hands. Father, at least 17 people inside outside there are up to five people online supernatural jobs may the angels of breakthrough take this word to the people right now right now right now right now receive it receive those letters in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit receive it in the spirit, in the spirit. for you for your loved ones I don't care what they read I don't care what they have. We give them jobs by the power of the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. I see at least four people 
three of them are ladies in the congregation. Your mothers are due for promotion. But they've done everything they know to do. As I'm speaking right now, an anointing will come upon you to signify what he's doing to them. Lord, go ahead. Locate them. Promotion. I force it. I force it now. I force that promotion. Take it. Carry it for your mothers. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. Whoever is sitting on their promotion. The judgment of God. We're going to pray for the sick, but um, there are two women I want to pray for here. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb. Now, I know there are many people. Listen, there are two women, particularly one of them, the anointing of please, no standing for wife, no standing for anybody. If you are not the person, um, sit down. If you are not married, don't come here. Praise God. Please. The two women by themselves. I'm going to pray. That lady, oh, let me let me let me pray for her. That devil, let her go. Don't disturb us. Don't waste our time. Out! Out now! Out in the name of Jesus. I curse you by the God of heaven. In the name of Jesus. You are living, release her family. Release our destiny right now. The noise maker, out you go and don't waste our time in Jesus' name. I set her free in the name of Jesus Christ. Now, please listen. We are going to pray for those two women. I don't know if there are here, the two of them here. There's one of them. Um, I'm seeing one of them. The anointing of the spirit is going to come upon her. I don't know who that person is. But there's one. Please, we have such people. We have to be fast. If I mention your case, once we give you one minute, there's no response. We have to move so that God can help us, please. Except if they are outside there, then that's all right. The married women that need the fruit of the womb, we have to pray for them right now. Praise the Lord. How many of us are trusting God for healing miracles in our bodies? Let me see your hands. I know many of our mothers are in this category. No matter what the case is, who is it? Stand up. Come on down. The power of God will come upon that person. Please make sure they are married, though. Please stand up. Stand up, madam. It's okay. Uh, madam, madam, it's okay. Please. Madam, look at me. Look at me. Look at me. How many years have you been married? 20 years. 20 years. No child. Look at me. 20 years. Madam, look at me. Look at me. It's okay. 20 years of marriage. If, if that woman gave birth to a child by now, that's the other person, right? Wariness. Why am I seeing her? I'm seeing chains around her stomach. You must remove it now. Remove it now. You are a devil of darkness. You hear my voice. Take off that chains now. In the name of Jesus Christ. There's no such thing as barrenness. It's nonsense. When a spirit sits on your stomach, there's no way a child will come. If you like, do whatever. You go to India and come back. You only waste money. But there is a God. Madam, please look at me. I want to pray for you. Are you here with your husband? You and you decided to. Where is your husband? He's in Kafancha. We okay. reside in Kafancha. Okay, look at me, madam. Do you believe God can give you a child? I believe that's why I came. Believe that's why I came. It's okay, it's okay, madam. Look at me. Look at me, madam. Place your hand on your stomach. 
I want to pray. How many of us believe this woman will come and stand and testify? If you are doubting this, you've not been in Koinonia. Madam, look at me. I want you to shout as loud as you can. I receive. Just shout it. I receive. This God, ba. Let me tell you that is that is not working in your life does not mean it's not available. I've told you this thing. You have to believe there are dimensions in God. This woman you see will come and stand here with her child. Why is she here, madam? Why are you here? You are married for how many years? Give her the mic. How many years? Ten years. The anointing is on you. Lay your hands on your stomach. Look at me, madam. Shout, I receive, if you believe. I receive. <laughs> There's something leaving your body now. Let it go. You are a devil. Let her go right now. Something is coming out of your stomach. That's what I'm seeing. That's what has stopped your barrenness. Go and have your child. In the name of Jesus. Go and have your child. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Please let me pray. Madam, make sure you people return with your testimonies. You want to pray. Is your husband here? Husband, please come, sir. I want to pray for you. Marriage is between two people, not three people. I look in the spirit and I'm seeing three people. Somebody is a stranger in this equation. Please come, sir. I'm seeing a third person in the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. I'm seeing a third person in the realm of the spirit refusing to let this marriage work. The devil is a liar. We are going to pray. Please hold your hands together. Just in one of your hands. Yes, I want to pray. Please put your hand this way. Watch what happens to you. <sighs> there is a name, oh. There is a name. There is a name. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. Lift them. There is a name. Let her go. Strangers. Kabataya. What God has joined together and prophesying. That's why I said, hold your hands. Anybody whose hand is not held physically should not be in this equation. Therefore, I prophesy. Any stranger, release what you are putting in her stomach now. I'm seeing a snake. That's what I see in the spirit. I'm looking and I'm seeing a serpent. In the name of Jesus, release her now. Release her now. Kaparatakaya. Marriage was done legally. Therefore, you are an illegal occupant. Release her now. Let there be miracle children. Miracle children. I'm seeing a lady in the crowd. You are standing in for your sister who has been married for five years. Who is that? I want to pray for that person. Five years. Your sister has been married five years. No child. No child. You are the one? Where is she? What's her name? Deborah. Where is she? She's in Kenya. How many years? Five years. No child. No child. My brother, six years. And you, the devil, wants to give you four years. Or cancel it. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. Will you come and change my destiny? My destiny today. Come and change my destiny. My destiny today. Destiny changer. You are the destiny changer. My destiny, my destiny today. Please, don't just come out at will. What's, hold on, hold on. Coordinate yourself. Who is this? Hold on, hold on. Leave them, leave them. It's okay. Victor, leave her. It's okay. Calm down. How many years? Nine years. Huh? Nine years. Where is she? She's in Adrian Bouchi. 
Kigea mata Zata samu ye mbiu Amen Why are you here my dear? She has been coming with courages For how many years? Yes Three years Hmm her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? Did you hear what I said? I said her husband wants a boy, she wants a girl. Who will win? The man is the head of the family. See, this thing is being done by an anointing. It's not, it's not, it's not joke. It's an anointing. Look at me. Listen, every lady, place your hand on your womb. I want to pray for you. Just, just place your hand and leave it there. Hold on, not, not for the brothers. Brothers, you don't have a womb. Just calm down. I know I'm praying for the sisters. That's why I'm praying because you see, listen. Just follow what I'm doing. You will be surprised to see what will happen. The Bible, the Bible does not allow you to test whether you are pregnant first before you marry. Is that true? So there is no way you know. You just marry and then find out. It's a disaster for a man, a family to pay the price, pay dowry and get married. And then there's that nonsense. So lay your hands. I want to pray for you. Let's attack it in advance. If you care for the prayer, lay your hands. For some of you, God is saving you years of misery. I'm seeing a number 21. And this is at least 21 people and families involved. Father, visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. I'm praying a miracle is happening to your womb. Visit them now. Visit them now. Visit them now. Right now, every thing that wants to plant barrenness in your stomach for every lady here and those watching online I command you to leave you right now in the name of Jesus I command you to leave you right now in the name of Jesus my dear look at me hold that baby you Ejimi, please give her that child just hold her so she doesn't fall. Just hold that baby. You are holding this child as a prophetic symbolism for your sister, for you when you get married, and for every other person, and for two other people who are in the congregation. This prophecy is connecting them. Where are they, oh God? Where are they, oh God? The anointing of the Spirit will locate them now. Right now, two of them in the congregation. For this miracle, for this miracle, for this miracle. That is, sir, please let me talk to you. Just give a few minutes. You and the madam close to you. Mommy, please come. You are an usher, but you are praying. Come, let God answer your prayers. This lady is talking to the Lord. What was the issue? It's my sister. You are asking the Lord to do what? Yes, sir. She has put to bed in time. But none of them is alive. Because I'm seeing a spirit. As soon as she's giving birth, this is like an antelope. It eats the children. As in, it's the child, sometimes most of the children will grow. Nine months, you give birth. Then they will last for only a few minutes and they will die. Hold my hands. Where is she? Don't, don't cry. Don't cry. Where is she? What's her name? Ladi. Ladi. Ladi will speak to you. Lay your hand on your stomach. Ladi, in the name of Jesus, we declare that this, this, this frustration is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. That is how I want to pray for you. Mama. Good evening, ma. Please stand up. Who is the stubborn child that you want God to touch? Lift his picture up. Victor. 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 
This is your number one prayer. The one you want to marry. Where is the person? The one you want a job for that graduated. Job, job, the one that graduated. The graduate. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Henry. Henry. Mama, yes, this is to tell you that God knows your situation. I hear what I'm saying. Yes, sir. This boy needs to be prayed for. So sir. that this boy, so that they will not go and lock him in police station. Yeah? This, I don't know who the boy is, but... Let it stop on, sir. That's what I'm saying, madam. It's okay. You are here for God to visit you. Amen. Amen. Who is Nonso? Nonso. Nonso. I'm hearing the name Nonso. We are going to pray. Nonso. Mama, we are going to pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm. Eh? Very soon. Solomon, you want to marry? He's he planning want... for his wedding, sir. Okay, it's alright. We'll, we'll pray for him. In the name of Jesus Christ, Mama, I pray for you. You came here expecting the power of God to touch you. Exactly. Huh? Yes, sir. Mama, do you want the pain in your body to stop? Yes, sir. You wake yes, up in the Lord. morning and there's severe pain yes, in your Lord. back. Sir, you know about this thing. I know, sir. And the Lord is going to do a great miracle for Mama. Amen. Because, Mama, I'm seeing you. You can't watch for long. You bend down to wash and your back is pain. Thank you, Father. In the I name of that. Jesus Christ, the Lord who has seen you is going to do a miracle Amen. for you. I command by the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Help my man in Father. Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord. Thank Please, you, Father. Don't, who is this? Eh? No, so, my friend, are you not so? Help the boy, his trousers is removing. Who is that? Who brought him out? Maybe we should help him now. <laughs> Sir. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you. What do you do, sir? I'm the proprietor of his school. I'm a pastor. I'm a civil engineer by training. You own a school? I do, sir. Primary school? No, sir. Nursery and primary. Yes, sir. You've been afraid to start the secondary school. Seriously, sir. Is that true? I'm afraid. Because what is happening in the primary, up and down, up and down, people yes. are taking their children out of your school. And they're owing money. And they're owing money. And you are trusting God for a miracle. Yes. Because you too, you need a lot of money now. As you are standing here like this, you need money. Very correct, sir. And this money is much. Don't collect loan. Don't collect loan. Loan is a way to die. Don't collect loan. Sir, I want to pray for you. One of the things you are going to start seeing as you minister the word is breakthrough. You will start seeing strange breakthroughs. Amen. In the lives of people. Amen. And then we want to pray for your school, sir. Things are going down. Yes. What you need is not money. What you need is very qualified teachers who are really willing to teach. Because the people there, they will come today, a few months, they want to leave. Yes. And when they, you know, they want, I will have to pray for you. Yes. The devil is a liar. Please lift your hands, sir. Father, I pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Let the anointing for speed come upon you, sir. Supernatural speed in the name of Jesus Christ. Grace and speed for you. Mama, God bless you. Please, who is this? Please, if we have not called your case, just be patient. We are going to pray for the sick now. Why is Mama here? Mommy, please come. Huh? Your son's name is Nonso. What's your name? Nonso. From where? Madame State. You are a student here? Dark. Dark. Who is Shidi? I'm hearing the name Shidi. 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 Let me pray for the person now. Mama, I'm going to pray for you. Uh, 
what you need this one is not i'm not even getting any word for your son or so what god is saying i should prophesy to you is that he's bringing restoration to your life god is saying i should tell you you see that song that i sang at the beginning of the meeting yes we are carry i'm speaking house is finished that's what god is saying i should tell you that is going to bring restoration to your life supernatural restoration right now by the power of the holy spirit hold my hands Honestly, i'm not getting any prophetic word for you but in the name of jesus may god step in and do a miracle for you come come and get in something you need to pray huh you need academic breakthrough receive that grace in jesus name please why are these people here huh john you are serving in prison have you started serving yes. in the place where Father, give him favor. As you go, let there be favor in Jesus' name. Amen. You are what? John. John. From where? Zaria. I said, Zam, Father John. But since you have come out, let me pray for you. Huh? Lay your hands on your chest. You love God? Hi. John. John, look at me. Please, God can give you a new beginning. You hear what I'm saying? Please, when I make altar call, John, run and join them. Huh? I'm going to pray for you, but that statement you made is not true. Oh God, help John. In the name of Jesus Christ. Because, you see, you have to be serious with God. Oh God, help John. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. She's older than she actually is. Huh? And there is a there is there is a medical condition this is a feminine thing that i'm seeing that is responsible for this um can i help sir yeah yes sir okay turen shima you, you understand english i'm seeing happy birthday on top of you and i'm seeing 50 years how old are you shakaran kina Upon me on sixty-six. Sixty-six. Nineteen sixty-six. How old is that? This woman is fifty, but she's looking like seventy. The devil is a liar. Huh? I'm seeing something. It's not something I can say in the open, but you need to be healed. Madam, this thing started happening to you since soon you were about 17 years about 17 years about 17 years this thing started this is a serious woman issue this is women talk father we cancel this nonsense in the name of Jesus Christ it must live in Jesus name beginning from today experience the goodness of God in Jesus name may the Lord favor you too in Jesus name we want to pray for the sick now this, this is our miracle service bear with us we have to deal with these things you see that there are so many there are so many situations we are praying everyone you can be seated if you can or stand we are soon going to be done but I want us to pray are we together say after me inside and outside in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. please say it like you are serious in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus. I, declare I declare that every closed gate standing before my destiny under this corporate anointing swing open now lift your voice and begin to pray please we are not just whiling away time pray participate in the prayer some of us that's what is that's what is affecting our lives every gate every gate every gate every gate every gate my finances
Alleluia. Alleluia. Prayer point number two. I will still prophesy it upon your life. Say in the name of Jesus. I call forth by the power of prayer every helper who will give me access to resources, to opportunities, and to new levels. I call them into my destiny. Lift your voice and pray. This is a powerful prayer. It's a very powerful prayer. Hallelujah. 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 I like you to prophesy and say in the name of Jesus. Shout it in the name of Jesus. As I enter these ember months, I declare that the mystery of divine preservation is upon my life. No death, no accident, no bad news. Lift your voice and cancel bad news. Make sure you are praying. Some of you are just looking. Pray. It's a very serious prayer point. No bad news. I speak upon my life. The mystery of divine exemption.
Everybody inside, outside, don't be tired. You're working out your salvation with fear and trembling. Before we pray on the request, I'd like you to pray and say, In the name of Jesus, how about now? Let's be serious. In the name of Jesus, In the name of Jesus. September, September. October. October, November, November. December. Hear my, Hear my voice. I speak to you. I speak to you. Deliver, to Deliver to my life. Only blessings. Only blessings. No, pain. no pain. No sorrow. No, sorrow. no, regrets. no regrets. Go ahead and prophesy. Release power to your future. Release power to September. You shut your mouth. You shut your destiny. Release power to September. Release power to October. Release power to November. December. No plane crash. No bus crash. No armed robbery. No terrorism. Hallelujah. Say in the name of Jesus I declare A covering Over me And my family members Wherever they are The seal of the blood Exempts them from tragedy Listen I shared some months ago Hold on I shared some months ago a vision that the Lord showed me. I'm not one person who will stand and say, I saw this. Sometimes I see these things. I just pray. But it was upon my spirit and I said it. Remember, I spoke about the month of September. Everything you see us do here is prophetic. As you speak, it looks like you are joking. But you are releasing power to your future. He said, declares thou that ye might be justified. Hast thou commanded thy morning? You don't sit down and it delivers everything to you. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Say in the name of Jesus. The seal of the blood is upon my life and my family members. Therefore, every spirit of death and loss and disaster must pass over my life and my family. Lift your voice and pray. No, not upon my life. Not upon my loved ones. They are sealed by the mystery of the blood. No accident. No accident. No death. No obituary. No plane crash. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards this prayer request and begin to turn your request to testimonies. Go ahead. All those online, follow us. We are praying. You submitted your requests and we are praying. Every request. Oh God, you have produced testimonies. Shaba katata. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. To the God that answers prayers. Let there be miracles, testimonies, breakthroughs. Turn around impossible situations, oh God. Let the barren come back to children. Let the poor return rich. Let the captive be set free. Let sinners come to the saving knowledge of Jesus. Let your breath be delivered. Let the sick be healed. Let jobless people return to jobs. Building projects completed. 
spiritual lives be fired. Pray, pray. I'm going to prophesy upon this request and I want us to agree with a resounding amen. In the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we declare, I use this as a point of contact. Lord, there are so many requests here representing the challenges in people's lives. Some for jobs, some for marriages, some for children some for breakthroughs some for study um, scholarships others for help others for reconciliation others for souls others for financial prosperity and breakthrough others for restoration some for deliverance others for healing lord i pray in the name that is above all names we have a covenant of answered prayers with you therefore lord arise as a mighty man and turn every prayer request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Lord, we pray for all those who have sent their requests on Facebook, on Twitter, on any other platform. Lord, in the name of Jesus, give them strange visitations. Strange visitations from tonight. Strange visitations. And Lord, for every request that made it to this altar, I bow my knees to the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. And I pray, answer everyone in the name of Jesus. Turn every request to a testimony in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our time is gone. I really apologize. Let me prophesy over our lives. Do you know why prophecy is very powerful? Most of the testimonies that you hear, listen, most of the testimonies that you hear are as a result of these prophetic words. Are we together? There are needs that God may not reveal and time may not permit to be able to extensively deal with. However, prophecy is powerful. It says in Numbers chapter 6 how that the priest will bless them and speak upon their life. There is something about a prophetic word coming upon your life. Those who know this, that is their edge in the spirit, have received it and it has produced dramatic results in their lives. Those who are careless about it like they are about many other things, never really get to receive anything. Let me tell you, even if it's an impartation, even if it's a dimension of breakthrough, for as long as you stepped your feet here and for all the thousands following us online, connect. Connect. Distance is no barrier in the spirit. It says you have turned my mourning into dancing and you have turned my sorrow into joy. I prophesy to you in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Joy like you have never experienced from January till now. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Joy like you have never experienced. Experience it in the name of Jesus. Hear me. I speak to your hands. Whoever is not doing anything here. Because God said be fruitful. I don't care whether it's a job, a business. I don't care whether you're a student, a graduate, a retiree. Whoever is having an idle hand between now and September miracle service. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand. I put something in your hand in the name of Jesus. Not something that will mock you. Something that will bring results. In the name of Jesus Christ. In the name of Jesus. I put pressure on your destiny helpers. I put pressure on them. May they respond to you. I put pressure on their spirits. May they arise and help you. May they arise and help you. 
Hallelujah. Any situation in your life that is a recurrent decimal, it comes as though the breakthrough is coming, then the situation repeats itself. I prophesy no more. No more. No more. No more. In the name of Jesus, no more. By the power of the Holy Ghost. Listen. Someone is speaking here like Mary and saying, how shall these things be? Lord, I, is it true that you will turn my life? I stand in the name of Jesus and I pray. A turn around that will surprise you. Receive it in the name of Jesus. A dramatic turn around. A dramatic turn around. Hallelujah. 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 In the last one month of my life, God has brought breakthroughs and things to my life that I have always believed God. But there is something God can do in your life that will make you fear Him. Not just believe Him. I prophesy to someone here. In the name that is above all names. That flight in the spirit that God can take a man and bring acceleration and not just surprise you but even make you fear. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive it in the name of Jesus. I pray for everyone in business here and it's no diving. Things are not happening. You turn everywhere. You've done everything you know to do. You need the prophetic. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. I add that prophetic dimension to your business. Every dream that is still on paper, no finances, no grace to bring it out of paper. You have been writing things for donkey years, but the grace to put it at work, I declare between now and next, next month miracle service, Bring evidence. Bring evidence. Bring evidence. Bring results. Bring results in the name of Jesus. Anyone called jobless in this place? That you have done everything to do, including giving money to people, and they have not brought jobs to you. I don't know how God will do it. But this mountain mover that can shake every mountain i pray may he give you not just a job a miracle job miracle job hallelujah every family here that is stuck in one place you try to rise something brings you down you try to rise something brings you down now i prophesy to you the grace for rising receive it in the name of jesus the grace for rising, receive it in the name of Jesus. The grace for rising, receive it in the name of Jesus. Every embargo of bad luck upon your life, it works for others until it gets to your point and people change their mind. I declare in the name of Jesus, in a way you have never seen favor and help, May you experience that throughout the month of September. Hallelujah. A dimension of anointing. A dimension of wisdom. That you have never seen. Receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. Receive wisdom in the name of Jesus. Name of Jesus. And I pray for you. Everything that needs to be broken in your life. Habits and encumbrances that tie you down. I command that today is their barrier. Today is their barrier. Today is their barrier. Hallelujah. I want to prophesy for someone who has never stood here to testify. In the name of Jesus. Whatever has stopped you from climbing this altar to testify. I curse that spirit right now. I cast that spirit right now. I cast that spirit right now. I cast that spirit right now.
Hallelujah. Stretch your hands towards me. I want to speak to you. Everything that makes money run away from your hands. Money has a spirit. You have obeyed kingdom laws, but this thing is not just coming. You would try and labor and labor and nothing will come. These hands that are stretched towards me, as I stretch my hands back to you, by the mystery of divine supply, may you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold something you have never held in your life before. May you hold an amount you have never held in your life before. Hallelujah. Two more prayers and we are done. I pray for your spiritual life. Everything that is alive grows. If you are not growing spiritually, something is wrong. And the measure, there are two indices to measure your spiritual growth. Number one, your degree of conformity to the image of the Christ. Number two, your comprehension of the mysteries of the kingdom. Alongside their operation. How to make them produce consistently. I pray for you this month. As we round up this month into the next month. Keys that your hands have never held spiritually. Hold them right now in Jesus name. Keys, mysteries that you have not known. Or mysteries you have had and have not been able to handle. May God give it to you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Finally, this is the prayer that I pray for people with all my heart. He said, you shall anoint, listen, you shall anoint Aaron and his sons. Right? And then he said, you shall take some of your honor and put upon him. How do you take honor and put upon him? Honor. The spiritual mystery that turns a man to a celebrity. Not by walking it. Honor is when men have the capacity to discern and reward what you represent. Hallelujah. I was coming from Abuja today and I stopped in Kaduna at a particular computer outfit just to buy, to quickly buy a laptop and proceed. And as soon as I stepped there, I entered, I saw all of them looking at me. They started jumping as if it was a crusade. Apostle Joshua Selman, I was so embarrassed. They ran, went and called their father, the owner of the place, uh, they call it Micro Manor in, in, in Kaduna. You know, and they were jumping and they looked, they said, ah, we, you have been blessed by your teachings, you know, God has lifted us, you can imagine the things that have happened, and they said, which laptop are you buying, and all of that, and I looked at them, I had to just run away and go out, because I didn't want a situation where they are doing business, they carry something that is so costly, and deep. let me tell you, honor is more than money, oh. don't be deceived, money is very finite, Honor is when men rise up to solve your problems for you. They rise up and make it their business to see you succeed. May somebody here receive that mantle. May somebody here receive that mantle. May a pastor here receive that mantle. May a businessman receive that mantle. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Strange honor. Hallelujah. When you are minding your business and some people are talking and say, how do we bless this lady? As if they owe you. They get up and plan governmental figures discussing how to lift you. And people say, what is the big deal? There is a big deal. It's a mantle. Please, I want to pray it finally. I know, I know that our time is gone. But I want you to receive this thing. There are people here carrying it bodily. When you carry it, it speaks. See, let me tell you. The true proof of sonship is a replication of grace. A replication of grace. A replication that you are carrying something you know. The devil knows and heaven knows that this is like an address. It will cause good things to look for you. I want to pray for you. Honor makes your life easy. Otherwise, you will suffer for anything. Everything. You are in trouble. You pay for it alone. There is a mystery of honor. And Jabez was more honorable than his brethren. I pray for you, my God. In the name of Jesus, I pray for your people in this great house. You have placed your mantle of honor upon this house and by grace upon my life. 
I'm praying right now. Everyone under the sound of my voice. Ah, yeah, 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 yeah. In a dimension you have never seen. Or for those of you who have seen a measure of it in a higher dimension. Receive that mantle of honor. 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 Keep standing everybody. I want to make an altar call now. Please no moving around. Let's honor what God is doing. No sitting down. Just five minutes and we're done. Thank you so much for your patience. We stretched the time quite. Um, but I think that it's worth it. If you pay that much price and you come back with tears some testimonies, it's a wise baguette. There are still people under the anointing. God is still doing things. And even after the service, God is still going to be touching people. But very quickly, I want to make a call. There are people outside all the overflows, any of them. And there are people following us online. You are saying, man of God, I heard you speak. And whilst you spoke, the Holy Spirit convicted my heart and told me it's time to make a commitment or a rededication. For some of you, this is your first time making a genuine decision for Jesus. Others, you have made that decision, but you are rededicating yourself. Wherever you are, please make your way to the front. Make sure that you do not leave this place without making that decision. God bless you. There are people coming. God bless you. God bless you. Don't be afraid. Don't be ashamed. God bless you, young and old. Clear the way for them. Please, if you are coming from outside, I want you to save time. Double up, hurry up and come. God bless you. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Keep coming. Alana Bakasuchi Ata. Keep coming quickly, please. hold on thank you so much for coming men and women people who love god listen no matter what has happened in your life no matter what you have done i don't want you to stand here feeling guilty rebels don't come to god they run away from god so that you are here in his presence some of you are rededicating your life some of you are doing so for the first time it doesn't matter what category i want you to lift your right hand please if you are still coming join them very quickly lift your right hand and say after me very clearly you are not reciting a poem say lord jesus i love you and i believe in you that you died for me to prove your love for me and now i give my heart to you to prove my love for you I receive eternal life into my spirit. I declare that I'm above sin. I'm above Satan. I'm above the flesh. In the name of Jesus, from today, I declare that I have the life of God. I'm a child of God. My name is in the Lamb's book of life. And I am victorious. In the name of Jesus, keep your hands lifted, please. Father, thank you for this once. You have drawn them by your wisdom. Let today be the beginning of, of great days in their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray that everything they have laid at your altar will remain there and never cling to their lives again. Open them up to a new dimension of life in the name of Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, I ask that you come into the lives of every one of these precious people. In the name of Jesus use them for your glory give them tearful testimonies in the name of jesus i pray amen thank you so much for making this decision now i'd like you to follow this gentleman and the lady waving their hands they will have your details in a minute and then you'll be back to your seat god bless you honor them calling on you hello beloved in christ we hope this message was a blessing to you i would want you to do something for us if you are new here kindly hit on that subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus 
drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise i decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain 